Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the Tech Guy is provided by Cashfly. C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. here the tech guy and if it sounds a little bit different it's because we're out of the tech guy labs today and we're in las vegas nevada and for the third time we are doing the consumer electronics show live good day to you if you would like to uh, hear what the latest gadgets are this is the time to do it for the next couple of days we're going to be here actually we've been here since wednesday uh along with about 180,000 other nerds taking a look at the latest and greatest and it's been a blast and you're going to get to uh, hear some of the coolest gadgets here you know the first when i first started doing this show in 2004 the very third and fourth episodes i did in 2004 were in fact from right here from the consumer electronics show and i went back and i listened to some of those uh, early episodes and you know it's it's really great to do that in fact i encourage you to go to techguylabs.com and listen to our episodes from ces because so much has changed since then. Even in the last year or so, so much has changed. You know, a couple of years ago, CES had a lot of GPS devices from Garmin and Magellan. They've got tiny booths in the back of the hall. Nobody needs a GPS anymore. If, it's, if it doesn't come in your car, it for sure comes in your phone. Phones are a much bigger story at CES than they ever were. And then there are also products that didn't even exist seven years ago. Seven years ago, I guess it shouldn't say it didn't exist, but seven years ago, Microsoft was pushing its tablet PCs. I remember, in fact, I think it was 2004 that Microsoft had a house in the parking lot here at CES, and it was full of kind of Stepford wife type people playing with their tablet PCs, dad in front of the TV, watching the football game, and computing mom in the kitchen cooking and computing the kids in the bedroom cooking or doing their homework or whatever it was they were doing and computing it seemed like a great idea at the time but nobody cottoned on to it this this of course is the first ces after the ipad release and <laughs> i guess if you look around you'd think the ipad uh had completely transformed the industry every reporter here is saying it's the tablet s smackdown the Tablets, 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 and there certainly are a lot of iPad clones, and we'll see a couple of them. In fact, in about an hour, uh, we're actually not even that long. At uh, 47 after the hour, we're going to see the BlackBerry Playbook, which is a very hot product, very exciting product. CES is uh, is full of products that will never see the light of day as well, though. Last year when we were here, we saw a lot of e-book readers and uh, devices that... Uh, that just never came out because, uh, you know, they call them slates because they thought, well, we're going we're gonna to get early to the market before Apple releases the iPad. And then they saw the iPad and said, maybe not. They saw the success of the Kindle and said, maybe not. One, it's important to understand what CES is. It's called a Consumer Electronics Show. It's put on every year in Vegas by the Consumer Electronics Association. There are, uh, as I said, about, I think, almost 200,000 people here. 5,000 accredited journalists. The rest are dealers. This show is really about the people who sell consumer electronics, meeting the people who make consumer electronics to make deals for the really the next year's holiday season uh, to a great deal. So these are often products that, uh, that aren't being made yet, that won't be available for months, maybe not till September. So I, I, wanna, I wanna let you know that because uh, we will see things today that aren't out yet. I tried to pick stuff for you uh, today that uh, is out. We'll hear about stuff that will never come out. 3D TVs last year, huge. They're still huge. And the 3D TV companies like Panasonic and JVC are also putting out 3D cameras because they realized there's nothing to watch. So there are consumer camcorders 
for uh, making 3D movies. There's even 3D still cameras out from Fujifilm and others. It's a very, it's a fun show. I'm not going to take calls on the show today because we have so many things to talk about, so many people to meet. In fact, let's start right now. Uh, I'm going to say hello to Scott Friedman. He's the CEO of Wowie One. Hey, Scott, it's good to see you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, you are making, and we're going to see a few of these little portable speaker systems. In fact, I've never seen so many portable speaker systems. Right. This is a big, hot category, isn't it? It is a big category yeah. because people are so mobile now. Right. And, and the truth is, it is, you know, we're listening on headphones for the most part, but headphones aren't, aren't always the best way to socially listen to music. So Wowie One makes, you say, you call them power base portable speakers. Right. It's Why power base? It's a power base because it has a combination speaker subwoofer. There's a built-in power driver, which is pretty much the guts of a subwoofer. Right. There's actually a magnet that pulses, and it sends the substrate of the pulsing into the surface. Yeah, I mean, nobody's going to carry a subwoofer around in their pocket. Those That's things right. are huge. They're heavy. Uh, they have big old speakers on them, but it's interesting because really you can do the driver part in a small space. It's the this, it's the thing that moves that, that takes right, up a lot of room. Right. Just like um, most musical instruments, the quality of the materials affects the sound in a guitar or a violin. Same thing with the. You wouldn't play a guitar play. without a big acoustic chamber around it, right. the body of the guitar. So so let me let me see this thing. It's not not very big. Uh, I'm going to describe it for you, folks at home. Um, uh, it's, it's about the size of your cell phone, only it's thicker. It's about, a, I'd say, about a three-quarters of an inch thick, something That's like that. Correct. And uh, there's, there's a front-facing speaker. That's, that's, that's the, the high-end stuff, right? Right, the mids and the highs, right. Well, why don't you play something on here? You've oh. got an iPod Touch hooked up. It'll, it'll yeah. hook up to anything with a three-quarter inch right. uh, audio jack. I'll play it into the microphone. So you can hear it. This is what it sounds like, just the front-facing speaker. Oh. And actually, actually, it sounds pretty good. Right. It's that's hold. That's in the air. That's right. But now, and if I put it on the table, I don't right. have to move my microphone down. Listen, it, the table becomes a sound chamber, and it really opens up the sound. In fact, it's vibrating. Right. <laughs> it's vibrating my table. Right. You can that sounds fantastic. Well, thank you. Now turn it all the way. How loud can you go? Can all you right. go? Uh, yeah. Could I have a party with this? You can have a party with a few people. A small party. Depends on the room. Yeah. And it also depends on the surface you place it on. We're in a very, very large room, and you can still hear it. Oh, yeah, I hear it very well. Right. In fact, I'm not even aiming the microphone at it. Let me put right. the microphone down. Right. It actually sounds really good. Well, thank you. Uh, but better on glass? It's great on glass. It's great on wood. A big wood, like a desk is incredible. Filing cabinet, desk. Uh, it's funny, when I hold it in my hand, it's really vibrating it my vibrates, hand. Even right. me. Yeah, we won't, we won't <laughs> I could put it against my, the, my side of my head and it would, oh my goodness. <laughs> How much is this? Uh, it's $80. Wow, we won, and it is available when? It's available immediately, and it's, it's, we've been out a little bit since, since summer with the, um, this version, and then we just announced... Oh, we have something new for we us. We have a new one. This is uh, even smaller. Right, it's now it's almost really the size of a cell phone. It is the size of a cell phone, smaller than sound. same Same sound? The same sound. So let me plug in the same audio into that. Oh, yeah. Right. So you've been able to shrink it down. We have. How much is that one going to be? That's going to be $90. It's $89.99 for the new one and $79.99 for the original. That's great. And, and you'll sell these in what kinds of stereo stores, we'll uh, sell, cell phone we'll stores? We'll sell them all over. And since we just launched, they aren't in that many brick and mortars. Well, and, and as long as I've got you here, let me uh, let me raise that issue. You you come here to meet dealers, don't you? Absolutely. That's, we, that's really what CES is about. We, we come here to meet dealers, but since we're new, we want to meet experts such as yourselves that have an audience that we want to reach. <laughs> you, you want to meet journalists because they'll promote it. That's true. Yeah. But yeah. they also respect people that have been looking at tech gadgets right. and tech subjects. So the dealers look at us too. They Very much. And yeah. so just as important as the dealers is the press. The, the press. Yeah, 5,000 accredited journalists at CES. That's the most it's ever been. And that's because of blogging. There are a lot of new media types here. That's right. Yeah. It's very interesting. Jerry Pornell, we're going to meet him a little bit later on. He's the dean of CES. He's been going to CES and Comdex since it started. Mm -hmm. uh, Comdex was uh, kind of the computer version of CES that went for many, many, many years. And uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit with Jerry about how it's changed. But, you know, he's the kind of person who says, who are all these bloggers? This, this used to be our territory. Uh, Jerry has a really interesting take on all that. Very cool. That's the Wowie one. Uh, Seventy nine ninety nine for the uh, old one, eighty nine ninety nine for the right. new one, and available in uh, your cell phone stores or thereabouts. Yeah, can like you look online? online? Yeah, Amazon and most online retailers are carrying it because they can get it in quickly, 
and we're in... You know, I'll be honest, I've heard a lot of these kind of transducer uh, speakers, and this is the best one I've heard. This really actually sounds very right. good. I'm yeah. impressed. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you, Scott. Thank you very More much. More products from the Consumer Electronics Show coming up. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. That's great. I like that. That sounds... They call him the Gizwiz, Dick D. Bartolo, Mad Magazine's maddest writer, and a crazy gadget <laughs> hound is here. Uh, he usually joins us on uh, the, uh, the third hour of the show. Yeah, exactly. But, but you're here. You've been all over the sea. How many CESs have you been to? Uh, about 22. <laughs> Holy cow. They have something called Alumni CES, yeah. where when it's time to mail you the badge, yeah. you don't have to fill out a form. They just send you an email and says, are you still alive? <laughs> <laughs> and if you respond, you get a CEF badge. <laughs> you still want to come? I guess they just assume you're going to be here, and you have to be. I have to be. But you do. You, initially, you did it because you loved it. Exactly. It wasn't. It wasn't because you want. You know, you were reporting for as you do now, ABC's World News Now. Or yeah. Well, I was always doing little radio things, and I figured the only way to really know what's on top and what's new and what's coming is and what and what we're going to see and may never come right that's the that's also fun stuff in some ways that's fun because uh you, you can mock it <laughs> <laughs> as we have we right, have right. we saw something uh that you have a uh a gadget warehouse in New York City where you yes. store all the old gadgets yes. you've received and some things go straight to the gadget warehouse. That is correct. Have you seen some things here that might go straight well, you know, to the gadget there's warehouse? There's this autopilot thing that, it, you know, I, I don't know how they can do it. it. It's supposed to be $200 and the thing the guy says, oh, there are buzzes in your ear and when you start to doze off it knows you're falling asleep and it rings well, a buzzer. This... So this is to keep you from falling asleep on the road. Yes, right. But you take it, you go online and you take a test and it, it learns your stamina. <laughs> then the, it keeps track of how many hours you're driving. It knows when you stop because there's an accelerometer. It, oh he says it goodness. knows if, you, if it's day or night. It knows when you are sleeping. sleeping. It, it knows, knows when, when you're, you're awake. awake. <laughs> <laughs> it knows if you're on the road. Or going into a quake, which <laughs> makes no sense whatsoever, but it rhymes. So you have a feeling this is maybe not destined for I, prime I don't, time. I don't know. I mean, a lot of times it's price. Because if that were twenty dollars, maybe, but two hundred dollars, yes, yes, exactly. that's an awful yeah. lot of money. You know, I spoke to one manufacturer, and I wish I could remember the the gadget. I said, uh, you know, I was interested in the thing, but I'm not quite sure about it. He says, "Don't worry, we're not going to make it." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Well, what?" He said, "Well, it's been, we've been here three days, and no one's expressed an interest." Now I have to tell, I'm going to show you something because you oh. know the other thing people talk about is is, is swag, the stuff yes, yes, that yes. they give away at the booths. Lately, and I love this, instead of giving you big pra paper press kits, they give you little flash memory yes, cards. Yes, exactly. I went up to the Victorinox people, the oh, Swiss yeah. Army knife yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I talked to them, and they said, ever since 9-11, our business has been slumping because nobody carries pocket knives yes, anymore. Yes, exactly. So what did they do? They turned to flash memory, and they're making pocket knives with flash memory. This is the best swag of CES. Ooh. If you go to the Victorinox booth, the Swiss Army knife people... You, you, they give you a press kit on a USB key that is a Swiss Army knife. There's no knife in it. They have this. They say oh, this is oh, this yeah. is the flight safe version. They do have one with a knife in it. 32 gigabytes. Wow. In that little now that's swag. That, that's swag that I can use. That is amazing. Isn't that great? Yeah. And they yeah. and this is they sell this as yeah. well. But For, if someone holds you up, you just you, you take it. You <laughs> have at you. you go, I'm gonna remember this. I'm gonna remember this. You. <laughs> <laughs> what have you brought? It looks like well, some cool things. Well, okay. Well, you know there are thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of cases for your iPods and your iTouch. So this is kind of neat. Remember Etch a Sketch? I do remember Etch a Sketch. Okay. Well, this is an Etch a Sketch for your iPod Touch. I love that. So it's a case. It's just it's basically a case. But a if you put an iPod case. in there or it's, a phone in there, it'll it looks like it, it, it unfortunately it's just a case. It's, it's not functional. It, it's I can't twiddle the knobs. But they do make uh, an iPod uh, an iPad version of it. The so iPad version really looks yeah, like an Etch-a-Sketch. It's exactly it does, the right size. Yes. That's pr that's a nice case. Yeah, I like that. That's a clever idea. Etch-a-Sketch from, from Headcase. Uh, yes, uh, Get Ahead. And, you know, I went over to Night Eyes. We love the people at Night Eyes. And I spoke to Rick Case. I think he's president. He said, Dick, we take an everyday item and we go, how can we make this everyday item a little better? So <laughs> this is their, their keychain. And the problem it solves is at least once a week you say to someone, oh, let me give you my car key. 
let me give you the key to the, to the garage. And it takes forever to get the key off. So every key is on a It looks little. like a mountain climbing little uh, kind of a thing where yeah, you just snap the, it right it, off. That's exactly right. Yeah. So it's easy to hold units. What do they call that? Carabiner. Carabiner. Right? Wow. Yeah. Are you a mountain climber? No. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. In, in, in New York City. We, we have this rock about this high, and I climbed it twice so that's far. That's great. He's got pitons, carabiners. He's got the whole works. Oh, and then... Uh, this is from Night Eyes and Night uh, Eyes, the key and then, rack. Right. And then they have a version with a built-in flashlight. Oh, I like that. So it, yeah. it lights up. You know, I like having a flashlight on my key ring, because how yeah. often do you need that? I saw an interesting key ring from the folks at Cobra. You know, they do the radar detectors. Yes. The... Uh, the, the um, hey, uh, oh, Halo? I can't remember. The, I should have remembered the name. So the the idea stuff, right? is it doesn't just find your keys, but if you lose your phone, it'll beep at you. So it's it's paired to your cell phone because it's Bluetooth. Right. It's a Bluetooth keychain, but you can put it on anything, and it, the the f the phone keeps track of the Bluetooth. When you leave the area, it keeps track of the last time you were near that item. So if you put it on your keys or you put it on your shoes or you what is it? What do you lose a lot? Is there anything that my keys. Keys is number yes, one. Glasses. Yeah. Let's say you glasses, hang this thing off of your yes, glasses. Yes. I don't think you would, but if you did, and then you walked away, it would say, well, the last time I saw your glasses, your phone saw your glasses, because it's Bluetooth, yes. was right here. You can go right to yeah. it. And it brings up a Google map. Yeah, yeah it's very yeah, cool. It's great, Isn't yeah. that neat? Oh, so my glasses are at IHOP, but I know that. <laughs> but I know that because it's on the map. <laughs> that's from uh, that's from uh, Cobra, the folks at Cobra. Yeah, Cobra. I think those are for sale right now. I think they're around eighty dollars, ninety dollars. Yeah. What else you have? You know, I I, I just the, the the woman who invented Snap It, the eyeglass thing, she FedExed me. She said, "Are you you're going out to see Leo? Please give this to Leo." We did it as a Thank gadget you. on the Daily. This Gizwiz. is a bizarre thing, but you know it's. It's one of those things that may make it, may not, but it seems like a great idea. Yeah. She spent a quarter of a million dollars getting it to market. I, I want to underscore that. We talk about it sometimes yes. on the show, that it is not inexpensive to create a product, get it to CES, show it to dealers, and hope that you can recoup yes, your, exactly. your cost a quarter of a million dollars. Yeah. So what does this do? So basically, uh, when you lose a screw in your eyeglasses, these are replacement screws with a very long plastic handle on them. They basically come with their own screwdriver. Yes, their own screwdriver. Which makes you look a little dorky when you're wandering around. Yeah, exactly. But I carry a screwdriver anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you never know when no, you have to get into it. It snaps off after you screw the screw in. Exactly. So it makes it very easy to find the hole, slip it through, and then break the tab off after you screw it in. How much are these? Uh, five dollars for the kit. Snap four, it. Four different size screws, the screwdriver, and the little carry case. This is this is one of those things where it's a very clever invention. Yeah. And I hope I hope that yeah, she does she, well with she's it. She's hoping that eyeglass chains pick it up, and then she'll recoup her right. money and maybe make some money. We saw something pretty. Speaking of eyeglasses, pretty amazing on Thursday night at the Showstoppers event. Yeah. There's a, there are little parties that they have at CES with some of the like around a hundred of the of the uh, products. Showstoppers this year had an eyeglasses that focused themselves. Yeah, pixel optics. Pixel optics. And it has an accelerometer in it, so if you sort of bow your head, as I do whenever I see you. <laughs> uh, Please, <laughs> right, kiss the ring. Right, I, yeah. I did it before. Uh, <laughs> well, as you tilt your head forward, it changes the prescription to your reading uh, prescription, and it's all done electronically. And the amazing thing is, even though the glasses are changing internally, there are no lines. You it's cannot amazing. See, uh, you, you cannot see that anything. won't be available in stores. You'll have to go to your eye doctor to get it. And that's what they're doing right now is pitching optometrists to build these, to sell these to their customers. But look for sometime later this year, yes. uh, glasses, regular glasses that turn themselves into readers automatically. Right. Called M-Power. M-Power. That's the, yeah, that's the e name. M-Power. Dick T. Bartolo, Mad Magazine's maddest writer, the Gizwiz. He's a gizwiz.biz. <laughs> I, I can't believe I'm seeing you in person. I've <laughs> seen you so I remember <laughs> when I was sleeping over at your house and didn't see you. <laughs> hey, Dick, have a great CES. Thank you. I'll see you later. Keep your feet you know, dry, and, and we'll see you uh, next time. I'll Leo be here. Laporte, the tech guy. Perfect bit. Perfect. So I'll keep that. Yep, yep, Perfect bit. Nice on the product. Mm. Yes. This portion of the Tech Guy Show is brought to you by my internet service provider, DSL Extreme, for high-speed internet at an amazing price. Call 866, the number two, get net to get DSL Extreme. We are at, you, you might hear some people behind me. It sounds like I'm at a big party. I am. I am. I'm at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. A couple of hundred thousand 
geeks, wannabe geeks, dealers, manufacturers, wannabe millionaires, wannabe billionaires here to show their wares, to find cool stuff. About 5,000 accredited journalists are here. I, I suppose many more uh, amateur bloggers and so forth. It is an amazing event once a year. We've been covering it uh, all week. And I, th I thought, I, as I did last year, we do the radio show from here. So you get a chance to see what's, or hear anyway, what's going on at CES. No folk calls this weekend. We'll get back to the phones next weekend. There's just too many things to see and do here. So think of this as a parade of products uh, of interesting and less interesting <laughs> stuff from the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. Jason Flick is here. He's president of a company called UI Labs out of uh, Ottawa, out yes. of Ontario, Canada. Absolutely. Uh, we are on in, uh, in uh, Ontario on CHAM, so uh, you have friends and family listening at home. What, what does UI Labs do? Um, so we have a, a user interface platform that helps device manufacturers have a compelling UI. So if you look at devices now, they're they're really just turning into a screen. Every device is a screen. There's a bit of differentiation. That's because there. computer pro uh, chips have become, become so cheap. Memories become so cheap. It's easy to put a computer in anything. I mean, I saw refrigerator. I saw everything has a computer and a screen in it, right? And, and as soon as that touch screen's there, the u a user expects an iPhone-like experience. And that's, <laughs> and that's not, not always easy to not do. Not always doable. Exactly. These so, these chips are low powered. They yes. they they can't use a lot of juice. They don't want to spend a lot of money on them. So you make it look like it's an iPhone. Yes, yeah, so we've got a bunch of rocket science engineers that created some really, really fast software, and even on really low-end devices. Well, you've got a device here. Let me, let me yeah, see this device. Yeah, for sure. So I'll show you. This is a... Uh, you can hold it up. But yeah. We're on radio, so nobody will know. Okay. So <laughs> excellent. Then this hold, is perfect. Hold it up. I'll pay no attention. Go excellent. ahead. This is kind of a really cool 3D demo on a uh, very low uh, band. This is a 400 megahertz ARM with no GPU, and we're able to get really fast performance with that. You can pick the items, and they spin and zoom. Actually, that looks pretty amazing. And you can Just to give this. people an idea, the, the latest phones here are ARM processors with 2 gigahertz, yep. which is, uh, you know, I don't know what that is, 15 times more, yeah. 10 times and, more power. And a GPU, and they're maxing out that 100-core GPU. Five to do times more. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. So and a GPU, more. a graphics processor. So yeah. this is this is a very low and slow device, and yet it, it has a great UI. Yeah. So we're going to see these on GPSs. We'll see them on yeah. refrigerators. What else will we media see? Play, media players, Oh, yeah, sure. you're not going to make an, you know, there are very inexpensive $50 iPod Touch clones. Yeah. Here, people want a good user interface. In-car systems, um, your your thermostat for your interface for your house. Now, you, you need a, a highly complex system that lets you know what the power costs are, lets you know uh, what's going on, and you need a, a compelling touch interface. So you're going to see that's huge. Um, a, a lot of the carriers are getting behind that now. And and s and smooth motion, but also nowadays people don't want just smooth and fast. They also want, c you know, kind of cool. Yeah, it has, to be, it has to mimic the real world is what we That's find. Neat. So, And in order for that to happen, it has to be physical. It has to have physics effects, be fast. Right. And they're really lacking. I mean, I see a lot of these great devices. The screens are getting bigger. But, you know, if it takes a second to tell me what I did, right. I don't understand what's going on anymore. So I, I do see, it's funny, the, the things you see at CES. There are operating system manufacturers here. There are people like you that are user interface designers yep. That's right. here. Yeah. So you're speaking not just to dealers. You're not speaking at all to dealers. You're speaking to the manufacturers who are here to sell to dealers to Absolutely. say you can make your thing look cooler. Absolutely. I'll keep this. Yeah. Jason, very nice to meet you. Jason Flick, it's UI Labs, Y O U I L A B S dot com. Thanks, Thanks for coming by. Thanks for having us on. I, I really appreciate it. It's Great. very cool stuff. Thank you. You know, uh, CES is difficult to cover in the best of cases. There are, all the networks are here. I, NBC has an amazing booth, uh, NBC Universal, with all of their, uh, uh, you know, giant cameras and all of their millions of dollars. We're here on, on a shoestring, and yet I think we're having a great time. Uh, we have some people I'd love to thank. The folks at New Tech make a device called the TriCaster, which allows us to do switching, just like a big-time TV station, the last time I was here with a big time TV station, we had a truck, a satellite truck, out in the parking lot out behind us, big cables, it cost a million dollars. Uh, this New Tech does everything that truck did, and, and some of it better. So thank you, New Tech, for the TriCaster. Thanks, Bob Heil, for letting us uh, bring our Heil mics out here. <clears throat> I know I'm a little hoarse because not only is Vegas dry, but you talk the whole time here. Um, but these Heil mics help me sound a little bit better so thank you bob heil thanks to brett by who brought all his lights out here we appreciate it brett he's doing a great job on camera for us um we also have an interesting device and maybe i can get these live you guys to come by sometime this weekend that 
uh, Brent and our camera operators wear uh, on their back. It's a backpack with a computer in it. The computer has six, or in some cases, 12 3G cards in it. And it allows us to stream very high quality video anywhere in a cab walking around uh, on the strip. We were actually walking down the strip with a backpack and a camera and we were able to shoot the whole thing and stream it live via these 3G networks. 3G, by the way, a big story uh, at uh, CES. Verizon announced that they're going to get their new high quality 3G LTE into 245 cities by the end of the year. I went to the Verizon keynote hoping they would out announce one more thing. And I think a lot of you know what that is. It's, a, it's an iPhone on Verizon. AT&T has had an exclusive since June 2007. A lot of people have iPhones. A lot of people are not th super thrilled with AT&T. Some are. I'll tell you, since probably half of the 200,000 people here have iPhones, you can, you can kind of make a call on an iPhone here, but, don't, but give, forget any data access. You, you literally can't get data access during the day on an iPhone here because the AT&T network is so bogged down. So a lot of people saying, please Verizon, please. And it's really up to Apple. Verizon said not a word about an iPhone. However, yesterday, <laughs> and, I, and I think this is somewhat intentional, the timing is no coincidence. They sent an, e an email invitation to the press that normally covers Apple products, not, not Verizon products, Apple products. And I know that because uh, I am on Verizon's email list. I am not on Apple's email list. And I got, and I did not get one. I would have gotten it if it were a Verizon announcement. I'm pretty sure, and I think the uh, Wall Street Journal and others agree, that Tuesday, January 11th, right after CES ends, Verizon is going to announce, yes, finally, an iPhone for Verizon. We don't know how soon it'll be available. Uh, we, you know, we, we can only guess that. In fact, we're only guessing that that's what they're going to announce, but I think it's fairly certain that, that that's what they're going to announce. And let's hope it's available sooner than June 2011. I wouldn't be surprised, though, if Verizon does, and I, Apple does an iPhone 4 for Verizon, <clears throat> and it's available very quickly after the announcement on Tuesday. It's interesting how Apple, which is not at CES, really is a presence at CES. They really, they really manage to occupy CES. When we come back, we've got some more stuff to talk about. Uh, we're going to talk about fluid computer systems, an interesting uh, form, uh, interesting tablet, and uh, that's coming up in just a bit. I'm sure I have a. Uh, all right, we'll do it right now. We'll do it right now. So, uh, yeah, Taryn Henry is here. Which one's Aaron? Hi, Aaron. Leo Laporte. You're with Fluid Computer Systems. Are you two guys together or separate? Yeah, actually, we're together because and their technology is what we're using to hybrid and. Build, this is a fuel, fuel cell based. I fuel cell based. Tablets. One of the problems yeah. with tablets, even the iPad, which gets 10 hours, is eventually you have to plug it in. Yeah. So you've made a tablet you don't have to plug in. Correct. What yeah. is a fuel cell, first of all? Maybe I should ask Terrace. Is it Terrace Wankovic? Yes. Nice to meet you from uh, Horizon Fuel Cell Technologies. What is a fuel cell, Terrace? Uh, fuel cell is an energy conversion device. It converts the hydrogen energy into electrical energy. And it's uh, originally been designed for spacecraft. And, uh, Which can't plug in either. It can't plug in. <laughs> yeah. They generate water uh, as an exhaust. This is also what all the automotive companies are trying to do for the future of electric cars. Um, but we've miniaturized it. Uh, we've made a handheld version, and we are powering the first tablet PC. We're going to take a look at it in just a second. Stay right here. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, live from CES 2011. That was a tease. <laughs> we'll come back and show it. <clears throat> Excellent. Leah, you got the live read coming up, right? And which is it? Uh, Carbonite Consumer. I got it. Thank you. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, live from CES 2011 in Las Vegas, Nevada. We've got a great setup. Thanks especially to the Consumer Electronics Association, which has given us a fantastic booth here in the South Hall, right in front of the subwoofers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you hear a little boom, boom, boom every once in a while. That's the subwoofer demonstration going on right behind us, Earthquake Sound. Yeah, it makes sense. Have a radio show right in front of a booth called Earthquake Sound. Actually, I don't think you probably can hear it. I think it's so low that you probably can't hear 
the boom, boom, boom. We're talking to people uh, who are doing products here. They bring the products to CES to show them to dealers, hoping to get them in stores by the fall. And uh, talking to us right now from Fluid Computer Systems, Aaron Henry, with him, uh, Taras Rankovich, who, are, who does a fuel cell technology. So, Taras, what do I add to this fuel cell? Is it oxygen that goes in there, air that goes in there? Uh, both, actually. We got oxygen from the air that yep. hits the fuel cell, and then that reacts with hydrogen, which is stored in the cartridge, which we just add into the so, fuel cell. So, in or so it, the battery for a fuel cell is a hydrogen cartridge, basically. That's something you buy and you, you replace because right. it gets used up. And then it breathes the air, right. and, the, and the chemical reaction gives us power. How much power? Uh, the power is uh, scalable, but right now in this handheld setup, we've got two and a half watts. Wow. Um, That's a lot. Yeah. And then the, unlike batteries, we separate the concepts of power and energy. So the hydrogen is actually just the energy, and we're just topping up runtime with hydrogen cartridges. Uh, interesting. So, so then your computer, Aaron, actually has a battery in it. Yes, a actually, regular conventional lithium ion it battery. It has a very in it. small lithium ion battery for uh, voltage regulation because what we've done is taken their cells and actually connected them in series and parallel to make them act like a battery. But so it has to be regulated by a small. It goes through battery. a little lithi lithium yeah. ion battery, which nothing is that would power anything. Storing a charge and delivering it in a consistent fashion exactly. is giving it smooth power. Exactly. Well, that's a cool idea. How long can I run on this? Uh, look, first, let's see it. Well, it's two hours per cartridge. We have two in right now. It actually looks a lot like a giant iPhone. <laughs> yes, it does. This, this is our prototype. This you're not you're not actually selling it yet. We've actually sold these models. We've, we've sold out of them, but they don't look exactly like this, the ones that went. And when you say sold out, you sold out to dealers. Dealers say. No, no, no. We've sold out to the consumer straight from our website oh, that's for neat. 2010 Christmas delivery. They've already been delivered. 1, and what, are, what is running Android? No, this is running full Windows 7. This Windows is, 7? This is a netbook replacement, and wow. our new models will be a laptop replacement. And, and, you, and you, you've got it connected underneath to a power yeah, source? Yeah, this is our proprietary, our proprietary hybrid uh, hydrogen fuel cell. So the case is, in effect, a hydrogen fuel cell it is, yes. charge case. You got it. That's very cool. Yeah. And ha now, I see you've got two fuel cells in here, right? Yeah, they, we've used the upper part of the case, but it's open in the bottom here, and we've wired it down into the small lithium ion battery and so i've got a total of three or four watts coming out of uh, these two units or is it we weren't able to really it, it's actually just uh, 7.4 volts wow okay yeah the and wattage how, and is how long is this going to last per cartridge two hours two so hours got four hours right there i've got two cartridges four hours and if it runs out i don't run to the wall i just get another cartridge now, uh, uh, Terrace, how how are you, how inexpensive are these cartridges? Are you going to be able to get these cartridges? Just a to? few dollars. Uh, okay. They're actually the lowest cost and the uh, most consumer friendly form of hydrogen storage. Yeah, very in not dangerous though. I hope. No, not because hydrogen is very explosive, obviously. But it's but so is lithium. <laughs> <laughs> the, the hydrogen is actually stored as a solid inside the. Oh, cartridge. interesting. Yeah. It's part of the metal. Yeah. Oh, how interesting. Yeah. So the, the the reaction happens. Does water drip out of the uh, back of it? There's a trace amounts of vapor, but okay. they're very, very small. Very interesting. So this really is a specialty product for people who are camping, who are away from, you know, they're in nature. They're somewhere they just cannot plug in. They can bring a bunch of these cartridges, and they can operate indefinitely. We're, we are working on the miniaturization of it, so it can be a carried tablet. Yeah. But for right now, this is just proof of concept. I love the idea. Yeah, that's and great. Miniatura miniaturization is all that's left. We've got pretty much everything covered. Terrence, will we ever get fuel cells? Do you think fuel cells will eventually power things like this laptop instead of a lithium ion uh, battery? I think eventually, uh, but at the moment, the best way to use a fuel cell is in hybrid mode. Uh, to top up uh, very power dense batteries which are currently in your right. laptop. It's a specialty product for people who just aren't going to be near power. For, for now. Of course. For now. Right. There right. are things coming down the, the pipeline future. that are a little bit better. That's very exciting. Thank and you so much quickly. for coming. I appreciate it. Fluid Computer Systems, what's your website? FluidTablets.com. FluidTablets.com. Aaron Henry is the CEO. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you. Taras Vankovic is the uh, founder and chief marketing officer of Horizon Fuel Cell Technologies. Uh, you guys are all over the world. Your business card says Shanghai. Is yes. that where you're headquartered? I'm, I'm personally uh, based in Shanghai, but we're a Singaporean company, uh -huh. and we have offices in 21 countries. It's very exciting. It's Thank a very you. interesting technology. Thanks for coming Thank by. You. Thanks for making uh, this show a part of your CES Cheers. 2011. Leo Laporte here. We're going to get more great products coming up from CES 2011. I do want to talk a little bit about one of our sponsors. Um, I don't think Carbonite is at CES, but I can pretty much guarantee you there are a lot of Carbonite backed up computers at CES because Carbonite just is the best way to back up. It's automatic, very important. Nobody ever remembers to back up. 
and it's in the cloud. It's off-site. Lots of people carrying their laptops around. This laptop, for instance, I, everything's on here. Laptops get lost. They get stolen. All my vital, precious documents, all my, my emails, my pictures of my kids, everything are on here. Of course, it's backed up by Carbonite. Every time I get online, this computer automatically starts backing up, and all the data is safe and sound, and anywhere I uh, want it, I can log on to any computer to my Carbonite account, and there's my data. I can even use the free iPhone app or the free BlackBerry app. With Carbonite, your pictures and your other files are backed up automatically, safely, off-site, and easy to get back. And best of all, for PC or Mac, just $55 a year at Carbonite.com. 15 cents a day. It's worth it for peace of mind. You could try it free for 15 days at Carbonite.com. Use my name, Leo, as the offer code. If you decide to buy two free months when you use my name, Leo, Carbonite.com. you got to back it up to get it back at Carbonite.com. Offer code, Leo. Leo Laporte, the tech guy here at the Consumer Electronics Show, CES. We're having a great time. We've got some great products. Wait a minute. Holy cow. What is what is that? This is another tablet. This looks like, I can't believe this couldn't possibly be the RIM playbook. The BlackBerry playbook tablet, absolutely. Unbelievable. Now, we've been hearing about this as a prototype device. We've been seeing pictures of it. And, and this is the first time anybody's held it at CES 2011. That's right, yeah. It's gorgeous. Now, what, what, is, what is BlackBerry doing? It seems like you're aiming this more at a professional market than a consumer market. Well, we're, we're, we're referring to the Playbook tablet as the first professional grade tablet. But mm -hmm. what we want to make sure that we're clear about is that professional grade is talking about the quality and performance of the device, not necessarily the audience. So, it's a. It, I have to say, it's small. Seven inch screen. Seven inch screen. Great size, I think. Yeah, uh, it's, smaller it's, than the iPad, but I think you know, pocketable, which is nice. You know what? There's no button. Oh, here's a button. Finally, I found a button. There's an on-off switch. There's volume, and there's plus, minus, volume, and pause. That's right. Is that the only buttons on here? Those are the only buttons on the device. Yeah, but there's some really great gestures that help uh, help make you know navigating the UI really intuitive. How do I do it? I'm trying to find it. All right, so you're you're <laughs> Teach in. Me. Okay, you're in an application right now. <laughs> Jeff Gadway from uh, BlackBerry is here. Go ahead. If you if you want to uh, if you want to minimize that application yeah. and go into our multitasking. Okay. You start a gesture from the bezel at the bottom. Okay. And you swipe upwards. Swipe up from the bezel at the bottom, and there it goes, and it minimized. And now I see it's kind of like I don't want to use the word cover flow, but it's kind of like the uh, cover flow of. Of the, these are the applications that are running right now. Running, like running. So these aren't paused in the background. These are they are. They're, you can see them moving. Yeah. That's Videos right. playing. What processor's in here? There's a TI 1 gigahertz dual core processor. It's an OMAP uh, processor? Something like that? I'm not sure about How that. much RAM? How much uh, one, gig. Stor one gig of RAM one and storage? RAM. Three configurations, 16, 32, 64. So it's a media player as well. If you're going to put 64, you're going to. That means yeah. I'm going to be playing some media on this thing. Leo, fire up the media player and just check out the quality of the the screen image. Okay, media player. I've got the shader view, ATP, Blue Marble browser, Adobe Reader. Where's the media player? You Touching have to show the me. Media tab. Ah, I see media. All right. Yeah. I'm I'm learning how to use this on the fly, which is great. And I've got music, camera. There's a camera in this. Yeah, there's two cameras. There's uh, a. 5 megapixel camera on the rear, okay. 3 megapixel on the front, but the great thing is both cameras are capable of recording full 1080p HD video. You know what? This is a beautiful camera. Look at that. Okay, swipe up. Yes, it worked. There you go. All right, I'm back in the media player music. Here's my music. By the way, all this stuff is simultaneously running. It's full multitasking. Very snappy. This does not feel sluggish at all. I have to say it. It's, it's moving very quickly. Now, this is not uh, iOS. This is not Android. What is the operating system? This on is here? the BlackBerry Tablet OS. So we've created this from the ground up. It doesn't um, look like a BlackBerry either. Well, it, you know, it, it draws on some familiar, you know, icons and stuff like that. But it's a it's an entirely new platform. It it leverages technology from our partners at uh, QNX Systems. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, are you familiar with QNX? I am. It's a it's a embedded operating system, real time operating system. Right. They've been building multi core operating systems for years, and they've got technology and this everything is, from. This is playing off Wi Fi. This YouTube video, or is it, no, it's playing off 3G. This is Wi Fi. This is Wi Fi. It's Correct. looking gorgeous. Look at that, and I can go full screen, I presume. How do I do that? Let's see. I'll tap the uh, Not full sure. screen there. Oh, Look there at that. <laughs> and I swipe up. It continues to run. Still running. There you and go. And all the other stuff is running. This is really a compelling product. How cool is that? Available when? How much? Uh, we haven't disclosed price yet. It's going to be priced competitively, and it's going to be launching first quarter 2011. You heard it here first. The BlackBerry Playbook. How exciting. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Wow. I'm so glad you could bring that by. That is Awesome. Cool. Glad you like it.
I can't believe. Look at this. All this stuff is still running. And then if you want, oh, this if kicks, you want, if you want to, uh, hey, I just came back from the Consumer Electronics uh, Show, and let me tell you, I've got lots of flip new up gadgets. again Sorry, here. No, um, if you're Thank if you're in that multitasking view, yeah. just um, turn in your used uh, gadgets. For here's gadgets. all the settings. Gazelle. That's awesome. Gazelle.com is a quick. This I have to. Okay, uh, so from the bottom, I see right there. Just go to okay. Oh, I have to get off the bezel. That's it. Find okay. the item you're looking for. And then down. Um, there's a little on the right hand side, just below that cogwheel. Yeah. And now, if you want to offer, close an application, you ship it to I just flip, for no, and get flip paid it off with the top check. of the screen. <laughs> you can even donate it for sure. The average customer earns more than this is, $100. You know what? This is very every impressive. Time they gazelle their uh, not only because it's a, a very sensible and functional UI, gazelle. but because it's very responsive. I mean, this is incredibly responsive. Well, it's nice to see this for the first time. That's spectacular. I mean, I think all of the attention you guys have been getting for this, I was a little skeptical because we hadn't seen it. It's well-deserved. This is a very Gazelle. nice product. Com. Battery life? Um, we uh, we're still optimizing the battery. We we haven't really guided on battery yet, but it's gonna be it's gonna be a great battery experience. Connectors uh, looks like a micro a, HDMI. That's the HDMI connector. Wow. Yeah. Uh, micro USB. USB. That's the a, charger or yeah, a magnetic charging connection. And then that's like okay, that's cool. It's yeah. like a MagSafe sort of, but not. That's cool. Yeah. You're tuned to Premier Channel but You don't 7. need a home button. I Leo like that. Laporte, you don't need the tech guy. One of the we'll other cool things that uh, I like about the, the HDMI out from is that Radio it, it, it uh, outputs full 1080p HD. So you can start a video on the train, right? Yeah. And then you get home, plug it in, finish it off. But we're making APIs available for our developer community that will allow them to uh, to display one thing on the tablet and output a different thing through the HDMI. So you could use the tablet as a remote control for a game, for example, and output the the, the game through the You're HDMI. To Are you actively um, Leo Laporte, uh, the pursuing developers? Well, we of course, you got to have an app store, yeah. I presume. Yeah. So uh, we've Network. got uh, the Adobe Air for a tablet SDK that we launched oh, back nice. in October. Oh, that's nice. Yep. We've got um, uh, a WebWorks platform, um, and uh, there's going to be a native SDK as well. Okay. So. A lot of choice for our developers. Uh, we've seen great traction from the community already, and, and we're getting a great portfolio for. Uh, I think you may well have the big third platform. That's really, really spectacular. I'm thrilled for this you because it's been 7. tough. You know? really I'm really thrilled, we'll really thrilled for you. I think really that's really this is a great UI. From Premier Radio Very Network. nice. Thank you so much for bringing it by. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. But that, that's the first time I've touched it. I'm very impressed. Very impressed. Glad you like Thank it. Thank you. Thanks, Leo. Wow. Okay, now you're impressed, aren't you? Let me look at the chat room. See, uh, I bet they're going crazy here. Uh, that's as sweet as BOS, let me tell you. Jared, bless you. <laughs> Are you driving home? Yeah. With Alex or? Uh, no, with Eric. Uh, Eric. Alex okay. is going home another time. So, so no this way. is the best swag of the show, thanks to John C. Dvorak. You go to the Victorinox booth, they give you this 32 gigabytes plus the press kit. 32 gigs. Yeah, and and the it. press kit. Yeah. Well, they, they, USB drives all over the place with press kits, but 32 gigs. 32 gigs. 32 32 and that's their lot. actual product. This is the product they're selling. They call this the uh, flight safe version because there's no knife in it. Yeah. <laughs> there's one right, with a knife right. in it. Is there anything else? No, it's all right. Jerry hasn't played with it. That's all. Is there no, a thing. toothpick? <laughs> no, there's not even a toothpick. <laughs> Where are they? Uh, they're right upstairs. Well, not. They're upstairs, and then. Towards the back, so, okay, so okay. it's a long ass hall, but de definitely this. And they giving those away, or? Well, you have to you, of course, press, of course. Uh -huh. um, but I uh, may have got one at the. At well, that's the, the funny thing, you, at, you know. At, 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 uh, exactly. At one of the peep shows, exactly. I don't remember. I don't. I didn't see Victorinox there. It was Dvorak that told me about this. Chris no, I saw them, them. them at, yeah. at either Pepcom or Showstoppers. I know they were there, and I got. Oh, okay. From them. Oh well, then you got it. I'm sure that they I gave it to you. It. Yeah, yeah. What I have, I have, I think, in a bag. I have something like a hundred gigabytes of storage, mostly in one and two gigabyte <laughs> press kits. Chunks. Chunks. <laughs> and I was just thinking that is more storage than there was in the cloud when I first started coming to CES. I love it. That's really true. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's more than there was in the cloud. Are we owned now, by the way? Not yet. We will be okay. in about a minute. Am I close enough to the You mic? sound great, yeah. Oh, okay. Thank hmm. you. Yeah, you do have to work it, but uh, you sound great. How much data was transferring around the Internet in 1980, do you think? 
80? Yeah. There was no internet in 19. Well, there was kind of. There was, you know, I had an account. I was. Uh, yeah. It's university. It was a university project. Yeah, I, dark, I had, dark, had an account right. at MC, which which was uh, the the Maxima Consortium at um, okay, here we go. MIT. Good day to you, Leo Laporte here with hour two of our CES coverage. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. I won't give out the phone number because we, I'm sorry to say we're not going to take calls. We will next week, but this week we are in Las Vegas for the big consumer electronics show. And it is an amazing thing. It's kind of only, uh, I don't know, only where, only in Las Vegas, I guess, would you see this many people with this many products. It is exhausting, it is exhilarating, and we're going to try to give you a sense of it here today. I, uh, I, I thought we'd do an unofficial best of CES today, and I invited some of the best journalists I know in technology, starting with my good friend Tom Merritt, who uh, does a show called Tech News Today on my Twit network, a longtime tech reporter. I've known him since uh, Tech TV days. It's great to have you, Tom. Hey, Leo. Yeah, and uh, Tom's been all over the place covering CES for uh, Twit. And stand, sitting next to him, really the dean of technology journalism, a guy who's been at CES longer probably than almost anybody except the people who started CES. Except for Wayman, probably. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the guy who just started it. Jerry Pornell, he, uh, you may remember him from Byte Magazine, his Chaos Manor columns. He continues to write those on the web at jerrypornell.com. Yeah, still around at jerrypornell.com, but Gina tells me they're bringing back Byte, too. Isn't so. that exciting? Gina Smith, <laughs> our old friend, yeah. my old radio colleague, and I... Uh, I told her because you said, hey, they haven't called me. I said, Gina, call Jerry. Well, I've been in contact with her, and she's going to come down to talk to me next week. So That's great. It looks like it's kind of a done deal. It ain't by we'll magazine without Jerry Pornell. Well, I can tell that's you that. true. She was actually she was asking about getting hold of, of Bob Tenney, who was the cover artist for Byte. And in get the those old covers days, back, yeah. If we could find it. I don't even know where Bob is. I haven't seen him in a long time. I noticed that. Ciarcia still has his Circuit Seller magazine. I don't know if they're. That gonna, was a great column too. I remember I got, that. I don't know if they're going to ask him or not. He was. He and I were the original columnists. So at, you, at you you've been part of the CES press corps for a long. How many CESs? How many Com? If you include Comdex, which oh, was the well, computer trade show. No, no, Comdex, I went to all of them. Yeah. I am the only guy other than Sheldon Adelson who went to every blasted Comdex. Starting, Sheldon started Comdex. He <laughs> ran it for yeah. years. So. Yeah. He, well, he ran it till it died. He owned it. Yeah. Uh, Sheldon. By the he, way, he's not broke today. No, he built the <laughs> Venetian Hotel out of it. I think it. he's uh, doing okay. <laughs> he basically invented Comdex yeah. and built the Venetian Hotel and the, its equivalent in Hong Kong or, or Macau he's a, out of it. And um, he got really interested in those, and Comdex kind of dwindled away eventually. But Jerry, you're saying CES is not a good place to see new technology. No, it not really. They show a lot of things that don't. They get announced breathlessly, and people hold them up, and you see them on TV, and then they never show. I have to admit, we just saw the BlackBerry playbook. I thought that was one of those. They were getting a lot of attention for that. I felt like they were kind of trying to say, "Don't buy the iPad." wait for blackberry because there's a lot of blackberry fans but tom it's pretty impressive tom's played with it as well yeah it's uh, it's very snappy it's built on a, a unix operating system so they built it from the ground up uh it's not running rim's normal blackberry operating system uh and they did a good job with it it's, it's snappy. gorgeous i like the gesture controls yep. Dude, uh it's, it's it's a really good piece of machinery you like it better than ipad I did. I, you know what? I may. The only thing now, I like Tom's about the iPad. Now, Tom's sitting in front iPad, of an iPad, so. The iPad has the bigger screen, and that's good for certain situations. So I almost feel like they're two different devices. Seven inches, which seven is what the. Inch, it, it's more of a pocket. You can pocket it. Yeah. But you can get it in your pocket. That's a plus over yeah. the iPad. I agree with you. Do you, you think it will run the Kindle reading app or uh, apps? I will would it, be surprised it if apps? it didn't. Uh, you know, uh, Amazon just announced that Kindle is available for Windows Phone 7. It's pretty clear Amazon's strategy is to put Kindle software on anything that you can carry 
around. That's, I would think they would. So if they sell enough playbooks, and because it's BlackBerry, I suspect they'll sell a few. Yeah. Uh, sure, there'll be Kindle on it. I'll get one and see what I think. Is it a phone? It is not a phone. It's not no. a phone. It's somewhat just, like the Samsung Galaxy device. tab, but it's much more elegant than Android. Now, See, I wouldn't mind having a 7-inch pocket gizmo that was my telephone. I Ooh, agree. I don't mind holding you know, a 7-inch box. I don't care if it looks a little funny. I don't mind holding it up to my head if it works as a phone. I had the same reaction, Jerry, with the Samsung Galaxy tab. I said, why isn't this a phone? I yeah. mean, if I'm going to carry it around. And it is in Europe. It's just yeah. in the United States where they're yeah, not selling it. Because the one I saw at the gadget park party a few months ago was the European model and I, and I was like wait a minute this has a dialer this has why does it have a phone they're like oh don't look at that that's the it's don't the European model. Don't look at that yet yeah. <laughs> it, I, I, w I, I think that Apple will eventually probably merge iPhone and iPod into one unit that you can uh, as it is well, that's kind of what the iPhone is, isn't it? Well, I mean it's I, an that's iPod. The, that's the oh, iPod yeah. touch. Well yeah. I read I read books on the I, on the iPhone. I, you read I'm the Kindle still, app. I, yeah, yeah, I read the Kindle and the Kindle app only because it has that scroller which the other apps don't have. Right. The nice thing about the Kindle app is you can go back and forth through pages just like you can flip pages in a regular book. Now let me. Now, we, I would we, love to have. I would actually probably carry a carry bag with the iPad in it if I could connect the darn thing up as a telephone. Yeah, might as well get rid of the phone. I think that's what we're one of the things we're seeing here. It's funny. I. I mentioned this at the beginning of the show. Is used to used to have GPS devices used to be a big part of CES. Magellan, Garmin, there in the corner in the back. Nobody buys a GPS. We're seeing a slowly all the devices compacted into one very sophisticated computer in your hand. This was a very good show for cell phones. Motorola with their Atrix phone, which is a two gigahertz processors in there. Some amazing and stuff. One sophisticated device, which I invented in 1972 in a book called The Molten God's Eye. I should point that out. Jerry's a science fiction author, and there was you and Larry Niven wrote The Molten God's the Eye, and there was a handheld computer in there. And it sold about six million copies. We've had five bestsellers, so it does, I've told I've talked to a lot of scientists, a lot of engineers, and almost all of them were big sci-fi readers as kids. And I think that in some ways, people like you, Jerry, who wrote these books created these products by planting the seed in these kids and they said oh i want that i'm going to work toward that i've had people who actually invented and particularly people in uh, uh, cosmology and astronomy tell me they Absolutely. they kind of got into the business by reading my stuff when they were kids hey who look who showed pretty good look who the cat drug in, in. larry maggot oh, from cbs radio he <laughs> is here i i didn't know you were going to make it i'm going to be here for a short time i got a three o'clock okay we're going to go quick wouldn't miss you we're this is really a, all about we were we made this up silly thing we're going to call him the the i don't know what we're going to call him the uh, the old guy awards for Merit's the best Merritt's not that old, so we have to rename it yeah. for the best of CES. Let me just go down the line, starting with the Dean of Tech Journalism, Jerry Pornell. What do you think was the best? I'll give you a couple if you want. Well, it isn't the spectacular one. The thing that impressed me most, and again, it's one of these real soon now things. I don't, they're, they're giving me a beta copy, and I'll find out. It's um, called Live Editions. From a little outfit that you never heard of, they were, I don't even know if they have a show flume floor booth, they were over at Pat Meyer Johnson's place with lunch at Pat Piero's. Pat Piero's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what they have is software that will let amateur authors easily embed video, charts, pictures, enhancements of all kinds into an ebook. And turn that into um, um, e a multimedia e ebook. Multi multimedia ebook. Now, from now is that I something saw, that attracts you as an author? Is that something you'd well, want to do? Let me give you. As I was looking at it, I was thinking. I'm an old college professor, and I don't have a lecture hall anymore. Suppose I decided to do Jerry Purnell's edition of Gibbons. Decline and fall of the Roman Empire. I'd buy that, Jerry. And what I have is at the beginning of each chapter, there's me pontificating <laughs> away, giving a, giving a lecture. And at the end of the, cha of the chapter, I tell you what you learned and what's in it. And I go through that, and I put the thing out. There's ten volumes of the dang thing. I put it out a volume at a time. Yeah, I bet I'd sell 
two or three thousand of I those. I guarantee you, you would just the well, people listening. And at 70% royalties, that's like selling 20,000. Right, much better. And, yeah. and I mean, my daughter put out a sequel to Moten God's Eye, and she sold well over a thousand copies. What's the name of that real quickly? Weeks? We're going to wrap, and then this we'll come back called, with the rest. It's called Live Editions, and they're not shipping it yet, but you'll see more about it. But that was what impressed me most Leo of Laporte, show. the tech guy, more of our best of CES right after this. Very good. I didn't, You found something I never even saw. I got another couple of them. That okay. Are All right. What we'll do is we'll go to Tom. We'll go to Larry. Larry actually, we'll, you want to skip, so we'll go to Larry first. We'll get you, and we'll get it, and you can leave. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I love I, I'm glad you came by. I, th I was had written you off. John, of course, flew out already. Yeah, well, I got a 3 o'clock. I think I can do it. Oh, you'll make it. You'll be I'll fine. just catch the twit limo. It's probably circa. Yeah, the limo will get you the limo right away. Would you there are no set of MakerBot is, they're coming by in a little bit. It's awesome, isn't it? Yeah. Is that not exciting? That's Marvin Minsky's thing maker. Yep. Marvin talked about his thing maker at a conference I was at with the administrator of NASA during the Carter administration, wow. not long ago. You know Marvin is. Oh, yeah. Well, Minsky had this concept for the thing maker. Yeah. And that's basically. He was an MIT mathematician, he, AI guy. He was AI. He was the Donner Professor of Technology at at MIT. Yep, yep. And Marvin... And I tell you, now this is a toy right now, but it's the first steps to printing printing objects. Yeah, it's printing objects. Now we saw things like this at, at the big video show. What is it? Uh, View... I don't go to it, so I don't know. talking about it's that annual show that's put on by the Artists Association. It used to be... Not PMA. The, huh? Not PMA. Not the photograph show. No, no, this was, oh, come the on. The Emmys? No. The, yeah, no, it's a big technology, or a big visual technology show. It was oh, 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 uh, SIGGRAPH. SIGGRAPH. Yeah. We saw these at SIGGRAPHs in the 80s. Oh, yeah. But they were... It's expensive. $2 yeah. million. Dollars Anybody can own, in fact, a lot of people do own these. Yeah. Reed Pettis is, is coming yeah. by. He's going to show us that maker button a little bit, okay. actually. Okay, yeah. that's the, another thing that... that, that it's you know, awesome. I want to talk yeah. about it for a minute. Good, 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 good. Uh, absolutely. Don't wait. Go to stamps.com before you do anything else. Click the radio right. We'll be back in about a minute and a half. Stamps.com and type in. Yeah. So we're not live anymore. Are you, are you we're in commercial. Are we well, we're live to our audience at home, you bet, and there's about 50,000 people there. Okay. But then we're also uh, we're off the air for the radio show. They're doing commercials. You'll hear the music in your head, and then uh, I'll come back in about a minute. <laughs> I know that. I hope I don't get in trouble for putting the enemy on. <laughs> You're not the enemy. <laughs> yes. No. Well, I will give the Larry's. I will give Larry's world a plug, though. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Larry used to do the. L.A. Times. Yeah. Yeah, for years. Uh, Actually, I should say that because <coughs> we have a big L.A. Yeah, audience. And yeah, when, yeah, yeah. when he left, they were talking to me about taking his, but I... Too much I was work. In the, well, it was too you much work. You file it daily. I'm not, not really a, no, I'm really a novelist who does journalism right. rather than right. a journalist who right. does novels. Right. So I, I just didn't... Uh, and besides, I, they, they found somebody else. And, uh, Who's doing it now? They had Mark staffer. Millian for a while. A staff guy there, now it's just yeah. a staff guy. Mark's now gone to CNN. Is, He's yeah. doing very well. Whoever it was, it they got a 22-year-old guy. Yeah, so they it wasn't got as good as Larry. <laughs> hey, I was only a 30-year-old guy when I started. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it wasn't as good as Larry, and it wasn't readable, and I, I quit reading it. I kind of I kind of actually wish you were still writing, Larry, actually. Mm -hmm. I'm still too. writing. I'm in, the, I'm in Huffington Post. I'm in oh, you Mercury News. I'm in CNN. CBS News. Oh, you are then. Oh, okay, good. And then okay. Uncle Walter got on with the Wall Street yeah. Journal. So. I've got, I got three columns. I would it. like to get Walter on here, but... Uh, I have asked. I'm, I don't know why. We're, I haven't we're, seen him. I he was. was I saw him at show leaving show yeah, stuff. He was on my show at show stuff. Was he? Yeah, he I saw him I leaving. Know, I'll, I'll I came by, but I mean, we yeah, our timing was weird. Yeah, Hold on a second. I want my 3D TV. Well, you came to the right place, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. We are at CES, the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, Nevada, with three of the biggest journalists here. 
John C. Dvorak was supposed to join us, but flew out at the last minute. Larry Maggot's going to fly out in a moment, so let's get you on next. Jerry Pornell is also here, and Tom Merritt. Uh, Larry, uh, you hear him on CBS News. He writes for the Huffington Post. Former writer at the L.A. Times for many years, covered technology. It's great to see you, Larry. Good to see you, Leo. Yeah. So what did you like at CES? Well, if I had to give one product award, one company award, I'd say it was Ford for having the guts to introduce an automobile, an electric automobile. At a consumer at, electronics at show. Yes, especially since the auto show starts on Sunday yeah. in Detroit, and they decided to unveil it here. Now, in addition to the fact it's a car and an electric We're car. We're talking about the 2012 electric Focus. The electric Focus. It has a remote control in the form of a smartphone. I know. Isn't I mean, that remember, cool? Remember, you know, our TVs have remote controls. Yeah. Now our cars have remote controls. Yeah. So you're lying in bed and you realize, oh, I've got to go drive it and I don't have a full charge. You bring out your Android or your or Blackberry or your iPhone and yeah. you turn on the charger. Or maybe you decide you're going to use that to, to charge overnight where you get the best rates. You and your, your spouse can compete to see who's the zippiest driver or the then most driver, the best <laughs> mileage per, per kilowatt. And it reports that to your phone? It reports that to your phone. And, you, and cool. there may be a social application. Later on, maybe you and I can compete to see who can drive an electric car more efficiently. Right. So there's a lot of technology. Now, the other thing I would give, and this isn't a company, it's a concept. This is the year of connectivity. So Ford and GM and all the automakers makers and Pioneer have connectivity in the car. Internet radio in the car is finally real, uh, and, and that is real. The other thing, of course, is connectivity uh, of appliances and television sets. Now, I still have no idea why my washing machine and my refrigerator want to talk to each other. But like Samsung and Panasonic and everybody have got them. Kind of scares me. I think they're going to talk about my diet and my waistline <laughs> and measure me. And whatever they do, I don't want that conversation to take place. Just, uh, just wait until your phone rings in your you're in the checkout line in the supermarket and it says you really don't want that. <laughs> Absolutely. Or I like the idea your refrigerator calls you in the checkout line and says, can you pick up some milk? Yeah. I just don't want my scale to be online. It, it, it'll harass <laughs> mine, me every day. Mine is or online. <laughs> they are here. It's called Why Things. Oh, yeah. And they make a tweeting scale. They also announced at this show a blood pressure monitor that will tweet your blood pressure. To the whole yeah. world. To the whole world. Whatever I'm, happened to HIPAA law? I'm, <laughs> I'm getting it, and I'm going to use it. Yeah. And then your car calls you and tells you you don't want that bottle of champagne because you won't be able to make the payment this year if you did this month. Now, that's not do. a bad idea. Well, <laughs> well don't, don't laugh. There are certainly technologies in the car now. We had them at our sh at Showstoppers that will help you regulate what you do in the car. Right. Uh, so I, I think that the connectivity is very interesting. We've been talking about this, uh, Leo, for more than 20 years. Every I, CES for the last 20 years. But it's actually here. Now, whether it's ready for prime time is another right. question, but, but it's here. So I would give connectivity a big plus that it actually exists. I like your picks. Larry'sWorld.com if you want to know more about Larry Maggot. I'm going to let you get your flight. Thank you, Larry Maggot. Always a pleasure. For making the extra trip over here. And I'm really honored to be on, on the show with uh, these fine, uh, with Tom Merritt and, yeah. and Jerry Pornell. Yeah. And your yeah. Thank you, Larry. Thank Take you. care. Tom Merritt, what did you see? What did you like at CES this well, year? You know, one of the things that I like is I, I play uh, World of Warcraft video game. And the You're Razor. such a nerd. Well, which, yeah. Which server are you on? I'm on the Earthen Ring. Earth and rain. Yeah. Wait a minute, you play too, Jerry? Oh, of course. Well, okay. I'm on, uh, I'm on, uh, I can't remember. But I am also. You're on the Earth and Ring, too. Actually. I am on Earth yeah, and Ring, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but the, We're uh, both in the same guild. <laughs> it's kind of sad. Now the nerd? <laughs> <laughs> Ali, uh, yak the S. Uh, the Razer Switchblade from a gaming company called Razer is a little netbook device that's been shrunken down. And instead of a keyboard, they have programmable keys. Uh, and it's meant for gaming on it the go. It doesn't have Q W E R T Y. No. It's it running has Windows kill 7 slash it's got burn. A, it's got a touch screen and a touch pad and a programmable keys, kind of like the old Optimus keyboard where you can have an icon show up on the key for the different things that you need to do. So it's it's an amazing looking gaming device. We're actually going to give people a chance to see it on the radio. I don't know how that works I, in about an hour. So uh, stay tuned for that one. I have to that that seems to you me. You play World of Warcraft. Yeah, but <laughs> what you're describing defeats the whole purpose. Well, it gives you an edge. No, well, I, I don't know. I know if it gives you an edge, but you My know what? My view it, is I, I like to play some of those those games. You get absorbed in them late at night. You've got, you know, it's you may be wasting time, but you're not doing anything else. But you take this one to the hotel. You take this one on the road with you. Well, I, I do that it. already. You got a lot my think yeah. pack and pad. You can check the auction house. I quickly. can't. I, I saw a picture of this. I did not see it in, in real life, and I can't wait to play with it a little bit. It's a, it's a very. Will you buy one? 
I, I'm de definitely tempted to, <laughs> yeah, because it, it's it's such a, a cool looking thing. The other the other one I would give to is the uh, Atrix laptop dock. Uh, the now this is really interesting. Motorola yeah. announced two devices: a, a tablet, which we haven't really seen much of, even though it did win CES's yeah, best it of. Yeah, well, uh, and it's shipping real soon now. Yeah, CNET gave it, and, and the weird thing is, it, nobody's played with it because they were just showing a movie on the screen, so we don't know how well it will work. Um, but that's interesting. That's the Zoom. That's their Android tablet running the latest version of Android, which nobody's seen, called Honeycomb. And then they announced this Atrix phone. It's a very, very fast phone. Right. Dual core uh, chip inside. Uh, it's, it's, they're calling it a super phone because it, of, of all the extra capabilities it's got. HDMI out. It can dock in a television. But what I liked is the, the little laptop dock accessory they were showing it with where you plug it in the back. It's got a keyboard and a monitor. And then you can use it like a laptop. Because it's powerful enough to do that. I mean, these smartphones are little would computers. Would you do that, like you though? Would you dock earlier, your Jared? phone into a keyboard and screen and make it a computer? I, I might want to do that instead of carrying around a laptop uh, if I've got all the data on it that I need. But you've already got it right there. He's got an you iPad. Don't mind uh, yeah. having the, that Apple wireless keyboard for the Right. IPad. A lot of people carry that around. <laughs> we saw a lot of docks for the iPad. Boy, we, we saw a lot of iPad accessories yeah. in general. I, I have a... An air. I don't have the little one like you have, although they're planning to get me one. But um, the I just about as soon use the iPad and that nice wireless keyboard if you've got a decent holder for I the iPad. I find that keyboard jumps around on me. It doesn't stick the down. Bluetooth. You're yeah. talking about the Bluetooth, the Bluetooth keyboard Bluetooth, that Apple says. I don't says. have that trouble with it. Yeah. I can't type on the screen. Yeah, I, typing I, on the screen I rest is difficult. My, I rest my fingers on the keys, and that just doesn't work on a touch sensitive. We, we only have a minute left, Jerry. You had one other thing you wanted to talk about, or a couple more? Well, I wanted to mention MakerBot. This is this is amazing. Marvin, they apparently going to be on the show. Shortly, Brie Pettis, so, who yeah. makes it, it's a printer, it's a thing printer. It's a thing. Marvin Minsky came up with a concept called the Thing Maker in a NASA conference I was in with him and the administrator of NASA in 1979, and he was talking about. Thing makers. The idea that you could have a device that would whatever, make other devices. Whatever you think of, this makes it. Wow. Well, this is coming pretty close to it. It prints it. It for sure you. is. One day it'll print itself. The other thing you might think <laughs> about. Would that be cool? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. It makes make to make a copy of this. Yeah. yeah. This is this is that's what Raymond Kurzweil calls a singularity. When machines get smart enough, they can make new machines. That'll happen, and then it'll iterate and iterate well, and iterate. Pretty soon, it'll happen so quickly yeah. it'll surpass us. Well, Kurzweil calls it that, but Werner Vinge is the one. He invented it. He, yep. He yep. Came up with. yep. The other thing you might think about is the uh, is is this the end of wireless? How so? Everybody in the world is carrying a wireless device, which means that nobody can get in, <laughs> get, get, get any wireless connectivity. You know what my secret is? It happened on the. It happened at the at at. Pepcom oh, you couldn't use an iPhone for, for, for love or money at CES because right. everybody has an iPhone. Yeah. So the thing to do is to have the thing no one else has. I'm using T-Mobile. It works great. That's, that's been true at CES since ever I've been coming. I remember going to Comdex even, even and you couldn't make a phone call because everybody was trying to make phone calls. JerryPornell.com, P-O-U-R-E-N-N-E-L-E. E -L -L -E com. We love you. -E -E. He yeah. spelled it before. Yeah, yeah. Tom Merritt, TNT, thank you for being here. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Well, that was so much fun. I know it's so short, but you guys are great and really fun products. I think really interesting things. I really interested in and I never even heard of this live thing. Yeah, it, that's it's interesting. A, so yeah, you can. It sounds like it's EPUB or Mobi or something. Editions. Yeah, it's EPUB. It's basically uh, advanced EPUB or something, but but it's yeah, still right. a standard. And it's open, so you can read it on anything that reads EPUB. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, but you'd have to have enough uh, horsepower. No, it makes it makes uh, it'll make a PDF. But well, okay. with, but it embeds things. And yeah, right. Again, I I can't endorse it until I've you actually played it. with it. Yeah. I don't I don't do the stuff that they're doing on. It's CNET. basically it's a publishing tool for, it, for EPUB. A, well, it's an author's formatting. Tool. Right, right. And if it works. I wasn't kidding about doing maybe. Uh, I think uh, you should, uh, Jerry. Maybe not Gibbon, but Klaus would is straight or something. But maybe thrilled. Gibbon for that. I'd be thrilled. Yeah. I would be thrilled. I would to read love that. to read that.
Thank you, guys. We're going to get somebody else in yep, here. I didn't realize CRC I was still doing his. I did not either until I saw that here at this show. Good for him. I have not seen Steve since I went to his house in Connecticut maybe 10 years ago. I am just, you know, it would be so cool if we could get that bike gang together again. Yeah, I, I would love it. If she we said she wanted to get Dvorak, too. Tenny, and, well, that's what somebody was saying. I don't know. Of course, he never was with bike. I know. But why not get the best, right? Maggie and I hired him for I know. Info World. I know. Uh, I know. <laughs> I think it was his first major column. It was uh, Maggie. I was writing for Info World, and Maggie was Maggie Cannon was, right. the, love was Maggie. the editor. And she, she, um... She said, there's this guy named Dvorak. You think he's any good? And I said, well, let me see what he's written. And I said, yeah, he's good. So we were both in Info World for a while. Right. For, for a while. Right. Yeah. I read that religiously also. I turned to that back page Info World before I'd go anywhere else. Well. See you, Jerry. Really great to see you. Thank you for being here. Enjoy the rest of the show. Safe travels home. I think I'm going home pretty quick. All right. I'm, I'm really glad you came, though. It was really good to have you at CES. It, it seems like you need to be here. Yeah. Thank you, Jerry. Fits. If it doesn't, we'll get you one. Oh. Let's see. Oh, yeah, it fits. Big. It's a little big, but I yeah. think it's a good look for you. He's a Shriner. You want a smaller one? You got a smaller one? I don't, do we have a smaller one, a smaller here? one here? We don't have it here, but we'll so get it for you. Sure, let's get a picture. Give Jerry a fez. Hello. Hey, how are you? Good, nice to meet you. Oh, it's good to have you. Thanks for coming back. Yep. Hey, Leah. Leo Laporte. No. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Do I have a billboard here, Kyle? Is there somebody I should mention who's yeah, bringing, us, bringing us this fine show today from CES? It should be my internet service provider. I would think they'd want to sponsor this portion of the Tech Guy Show. DSL Extreme for high-speed internet at an amazing price. 866, the number two get net to get DSL Extreme. Leo Laporte, the Tech Guy. We are in Las Vegas, the Consumer Electronics Show. It's too much. It's all too much. Too much. Too much stuff. Too many people. Too, too much food. Too much fun. Too much excitement. It's just exhausting, and it's, it's the place to be. In the, fir in the first week of uh, any year, just to see what's coming. And so instead of making you come here and, 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 and get your feet sore and your throat sore and get exhausted, we're bringing you the best of CES over the next few hours today and tomorrow. From General Electric, Michael Mann is here. He is part of the GE Energy folks. Nice to see you, Michael. Thanks for having me, Leo. Lots of interesting things going on. You know, Ford, as we just mentioned, announced its electric focus. They debuted Nissan's it got yep. the Leaf. GE's got the uh, General Motors has the Volt, the Chevy Volt. So we're seeing electric vehicles hit the roads. And one of the keys on electric vehicles is plugging them in. That's exactly right. You can't put them in a fuel pump. Nope. And, there, and there aren't really electrical outlets. Although they're more and more all the time, I have to say. Um, I just parked at the Oakland Airport. And if you park right next to the terminal, they've got three electrical outlets. And you get pride of place if you drive your electric car to the airport. Yeah, th that's what we're seeing with a lot of places. These are going to be kind of the premium parking spots yeah. for the electric vehicle. Your parking. reward for yeah. being a good person. That's exactly right. General Electric is making uh, vehicle chargers, both for the home. Of course, if you have an electric vehicle, you have to have one in the home. Yep. The Watt station. It's very attractive. Are these? Are they all 240? Are they 120? What? It? They're 240. Okay. So these are uh, level two chargers. It's 240, 40 amps, like a dryer circuit. So you can't just plug into the wall. You I can. mean, you could. It just takes forever. You can. It just takes. You know, for a leaf, I think it's like 18, 20 hours yeah, to charge. Yeah, that's no good. Right. That's no good. Yep. But that's one of the things I was really impressed with Ford. They've got the charging times down considerably if you have enough juice coming into the car. Yeah. Ford made an interesting choice. They've put a, a bigger kilowatt ch charger in the car, uh, so it actually charges a little faster than some of the other That's vehicles. a great thing. Yeah, yeah, it's good. You're also making uh, commercial GE Watt stations. Um, are municipalities getting these? They're actually really attractive. I know you won an yeah. innovation award here at CES for how beautiful these these are. Yeah, we did. Yves e Bahar designed these. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. There's been some TV commercials on the air that you may have seen. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we've just gotten a lot of good attention. A lot of cities want to put them out. Uh, in I public. can see these. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Being in, 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 in it, it would not be an unattractive part of the city. No, that's exactly right. And when we came up with the design, we were really looking for something. I mean, no one wants something that looks like a big piece of electrical equipment right. sitting out in the city street. Right, right. Uh, so Eve came up with something pretty cool. 
then of course the home chargers are pretty good looking too. Yeah, and we're actually doing a limited edition CES version of the home charger. <laughs> color. Yeah, uh, and so if you go by the booth, uh, we'll only ever make them available here. Uh, and folks have been pre-ordering them all week. You know what? I'm going to have to go by the booth. I yeah. don't have an electric car yet, but I know I'm getting a Focus. you got to come get one. And of these will work with all the electric cars? It doesn't Absolutely. matter? Any, yeah, any electric car? Yeah. Yep. That's cool. Now, you brought something else. What is that? A little? We call them a wall wart, something right. that plugs into your uh, wall, but then it has a little thing sticking out. What so is that? This is the GE Nucleus, and it's a, a, pl uh, a product from our appliances division. Uh, and this will actually talk to the watt station. You plug this in the wall. It'll oh, talk to the it watt has station. Ethernet on it. You don't even need that. It's got Zigbee as well, so it can communicate. Go through the power line. That's exactly right. So you can talk. Uh, you can look at the status of your electric car. And I've, I've got an iPhone here, Leo. Uh, you can take a look at it, and you can see kind of so know, how much energy you're using on your appliances so this, and your electric this vehicle. So this plug-in will tell me on my iPhone on, uh, or my iPod Touch, it'll tell me what's using what. That's exactly right. So this is a, a way of people really kind of monitoring how much power they're using. You can watch the power you're using. You can do neat little stuff on there like I see. Uh, CO2 I see I've used 53 cents so far, and my average day is 6 cents on this thing, how much CO2 I've used. Uh, I could see where my thermostat has been. Uh, I could save by turning it down. I could get that kind of information. This is really cool. Yep. Is this free? Is this available now? Uh, so the Nucleus will be available about third quarter this year. Okay. Uh, you can, you'll be able to buy it at a lot of major retailers. How much do you think you'll be uh, charging for it? They're saying it's going to be between 149 and 199 okay. uh, which is pretty affordable for a home energy manager. Yeah. yeah. And that it's just you plugs into the wall and it knows everything. It's simple. <laughs> yeah. It talks to your electric car, talks to the charger, talks to the watt station. It's pretty cool. I love that. Yeah. It's so nice to meet you. Thanks for coming by and thanks to General Electric for helping to green the uh, green the world. I know that's a big part of GE's uh, you know, mo uh, model now. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for having really us, Leo. And stop by the booth. We'd love to get I you will. a limited I edition sign up. station. Okay. What, what, what makes it limited edition? Is it gold? It, it's a special design that Eves did. Oh, so that's it's so actually cool. white and copper, and it's autographed by Eves Bahar. I'm getting that. So you got to come by. <laughs> then I'll have to get the car. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Michael Mayen, Global Product Manager for Industrial Solutions for General Electric Energy. It's really nice to meet you. Thanks, thanks for, for stopping by. We are at the Consumer Electronics Show, CES 2011. Uh, so many interesting devices, but at the same time, the iPad has kind of infected the Consumer Electronics Show in somewhat in the same way that the iPod and the iPod Touch infected Macworld Expo. For a couple of years, Macworld Expo turned into an accessory show. Except the iPod was so successful, that's what people were making money on as accessories. And I have to tell you, there is an entire area of the Consumer Electronics Show devoted to accessories for the iPad. The iPad wasn't even out last year, and already it's become a big part of CES. Joining us right now, a good friend, a guy I love to talk to. Uh, at Je Jerry Pornell was talking about his product. Bree Pettis is here from MakerBot. Hey, Bree, great hey. to see you. It's good to see you, Leo. MakerBot is a printer that prints objects, prints things. That's exactly right. It's a 3D printer. It's And you brought some 3D things by. Uh, I did. Now, these aren't yet machines it's printing sculpture in effect well I mean it's to the point now that you can print out contraptions we just had somebody you can we just had somebody upload a little extremely creepy hexapod robot yeah and it, it goes okay. and it's got a skull on its on the front of it and it's just like it's so straight out we're of getting closer and closer to making machines with machines oh yeah we're there I mean somebody actually made a maker bot with a maker bot well, that's really interesting. I mean, that's pretty meta. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, really thing that's, the thing that's really exciting about MakerBot is it's affordable. Anybody can have one. Yeah, it's twelve twenty five to get into it. and uh, 1225 bucks. That's correct. Like a computer, basically. Yeah. Yep. And you hook it up to a computer. Yep, you hook it up to your computer. You, you either design or download digital, d digital models. Okay. And then you just hit print. There is a whole website full of digital models people have made, so you oh, don't yeah. have to be an expert in 3D CAD design. Yeah, there, we have a site called Thingiverse where our community shares digital designs. And there's 5,000 things you can just go and download now. Like, if you need a doorknob, there's actually eight different knobs on <laughs> Thingiverse. <laughs> what, are these, what are the materials that we're printing in here? There's two different types of materials. All the stuff I've got here is ABS. Plastic. Plastic. What, what, give me a couple of them. Sure. I'll show the camera. For those of you listening on the radio, you'll just have to use your imagination. But if you're uh, watching our live stream at live.twit.tv, you can see that looks like Chartres or Notre Dame. That's a church. It's the uh, Cologne Cathedral, Cologne. I guess. Yeah. I've been there, yeah. Wow, it's gorgeous. And now, so this, it, the ABS is like a plastic thread. Yeah, it's kind of like as a calculator is to a computer, so a hot glue gun is to a MakerBot. <laughs> it, it takes uh, a... <laughs> 
you were probably your SAT scores are through the roof, weren't they, <laughs> pre Um It takes like a, a noodle of, of plastic, and then it squeezes it through a very teeny tiny hole at high temperature, and then it draws with it, and then it lifts up and draws again, and layer by layer, it makes an object. This is a face. Uh, it would I would say it's a bust. Is that a human, real person's face? Yeah, that's a guy. His handle is Unfold, and uh, he scanned his face and uploaded to Thingiverse. And at this time, I, I believe he's the most replicated human being. Because everybody's using his design. Oh, it's a great, it's a great model, and he's it just looks so face. cool. Yeah. He's got a great profile. <laughs> that is really, really neat. Uh, now, this one I, I've, I recognize in a smaller form. This is yeah. a Lego guy. Yeah, that's a four times uh, Lego guy. It's, he's four times as big. And uh, Michael Curry made these for Christmas gifts. He made. We've oh, got a new. That's uh, really neat. We've got a new thing on the Thingamatic where basically, when you print, it, there's a little conveyor belt on it, so you can print something, and when it's done, it'll spit it out the front, and then make <laughs> another one. And so he made 20 little Lego guys <laughs> like this. And then he lives in Kansas City, so he did a tour of Kansas City where like, Kansas City was mobbed by Lego. Little, man. little Lego men, little 4x Lego men. How long does it take to print something like that? About four hours. Where should people go to find out more about MakerBot? Uh, you can go to MakerBot.com, and then to see designs, you can go to Thingiverse.com. Ray Pettis from MakerBot Industries. Thanks for joining hey, us. Hey, it's good, great to be here, Leo. Happy CES. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. That's great. <laughs> that is so cool. And here's an alien. Look at that. Ooh, that's creepy. Isn't that creepy? Ooh. If you buried that at Area 51, I guarantee you an entire blog industry would spring up around it. That's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing really well with MakerBot, I think. Yeah. I mean, it's really neat. Did you have a booth here? Yeah, we had a booth upstairs. We've been mobbed the entire time. I am so pleased and, uh, to hear that. Yeah, Forbes actually nominated, like, put us up as be their best in show. That's awesome. Which is pretty That's really awesome. I mean, we're this DIY 3D printer made out of wood. <laughs> I know. It's hysterical. <laughs> it makes me really happy. Yeah, it's wonderful. Um, Jerry Purnell was here. Was picked it as one of his favorites as well. You oh, might, great! You might want to know that. And uh, he uh, he said this it reminded him when Marvin Minsky told him about his thing maker at the NASA conference 30 or 40 years ago. He's, he proposed a thing maker, and he said the MakerBot is the thing maker that Marvin Minsky was talking about decades ago. Pretty that cool. Me, that's just. I'll get you the recording I'm, of that. I, my my arm, my hair is going up on my cool. arms right now. Isn't that That's cool? That's really cool. You did it. <laughs> Thank you, Bree. It's really nice to see you. Thanks for coming by. Oh, Whoa, don't break here. it. Don't break it. Oh, it's really durable stuff. I'd have to work to break this stuff pretty hard. Run it over with a truck. <laughs> Thanks, Bree. Take care. We'll see you later. Domo arigato, Mr. Roboto. Leo Laporte, the tech guy live from CES. It sounds like there's a party going on. There is. We're in Las Vegas, Nevada, where the Consumer Electronics Show is in its third day. One more day tomorrow. We'll be here today and tomorrow covering it uh, as I have been all week for our uh, podcast network, This Week in Tech. In fact, there are a bunch of uh, video, a uh, uh, ton of video coverage uh, at twit.tv, twit.tv in our specials uh, folder. Um, but I am not alone, and that's one of the things that's kind of changed at CES. There are a lot of bloggers, a lot of video. There is, it's probably the single most covered event since the World Cup. <laughs> Becky Worley is here from ABC Television. She is the tech gal at uh, Good Morning America. Hi, Becky, and I'm one of hey, our yeah. hosts as well. It's yeah. nice to see you. Nice to be here. So you, 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 t you had a very good CES. You talked to the CEO of Intel. Mm -hmm. You talked to the guy in charge of Sony. You talked to everybody. I did. I had the CEO Rama, um, and you know, normally this show is about gadgets, but I, it was interesting to talk to the head cheeses about what their vision for their companies. All of these are real, you know, stalwarts of tech, and what they see as as the future. Um, I think some of the the highlights would be from Steve Ballmer. The quote that I took away is, "This is not your father's Microsoft." Yeah. Microsoft. He is wishes. He's hoping. He's <laughs> praying. Now, by the way, my dad didn't have Microsoft, so <laughs> he's speaking to my kids because I did have Microsoft. Uh, you know, and I think they're really trying to reinvent themselves. They announced uh, facial recognition for the Connect gaming system. You know, they said something really kind of shocking to me at the keynote. Steve Ballmer said they'd sold eight million Connects already in two months. It was a huge debut for the product. It was the 
holiday gift. And what I find interesting is they decided to open up the Connect to developers, outside developers. And I asked Steve about that. He said, yeah, we were going to innovate the Connect you know, recognition a little slowly, but then the hackers got it, and boom! That's <laughs> how he said it, and there's boom! There's Connect porn. I mean, you can, people are doing all sorts of interesting stuff, and, and Microsoft's not stopping them. No, and some of the stuff really could create new business for them. An example that is really very um, progressive, radiologists in Switzerland have taken the Connect technology, and when they're in surgery and they get, sur they get uh, uh, x-ray images back from the surgery, they don't have to touch a mouse or any type of trackpad when they're sterile and gloved up, right. they can use Connect to move in and out of the x-rays just with the motion of their arms and stay sterile in their gloves, not having to re-scrub in. Isn't that interesting? It's just one example of how Microsoft says, you know what, we got to change our business. It's not just software anymore. They also were big on their phones and on the, the slates, which are their answer to tablets. I have heard a number of people say, though, why does Steve Ballmer continue to open the Consumer Electronics Show when Microsoft is really the least progressive company here in I, some ways? My gut instinct is this is the last time. Yeah. Um, uh, you, you talked to Howard Stringer of Sony. Right, I gave him a Lifetime Achievement Award at the uh, <laughs> Emmy Awards for Geeks, the engineering and uh, technical innovation. How I hosted fun. that. And uh, a couple things that were interesting. So he said Sony is suffering from a backwards looking mentality. Their arrest, he said, there, we talked way too much about the Trinitron and about the Walkman and we're not talking enough about the future. Thank goodness he realizes that because they went from the number one consumer electronics company in the world to really an almost an also ran except for TVs. Yeah, and and uh, I think you know he addressed TVs and their interest in 3D. He was obviously very concerned about the issues around 3D affecting the vision of young children and he's addressed it specifically in his uh, in his speech in the acceptance speech uh, one thing he said you know they're working on a head mounted display yeah um, and he said you know he was referring to their obsession with the walkman he said I don't think we should be calling our head mounted display the head man <laughs> <laughs> good for him uh, uh, you know it, it's it's good to see him have that kind of attitude I hope he can do it one of the things that's exciting about CES is to see the new guard come in mm -hmm. see the old guard start to fade you know, 3D TVs, I've not been a big fan of. There were a lot of 3D TVs here. But I was very pleased to see LG, a, a Korean company that used to be called Lucky Gold Star. <laughs> it was the junk TV you found in the back of the drugstore. Mm -hmm. They said, we don't want to be that anymore. And they've come on strong. They're making the first 3D TV that doesn't require active glasses. Those are the very expensive shuttered glasses. You can wear the, sa wear the same cheap glasses you get at the movie theater. They look very good. I was very impressed with the LG uh, TVs and it takes away one of my biggest complaints about 3D TV is these ugly expensive glasses. Now you can buy a pack for a hundred bucks of ten glasses and everybody can watch. So I think that's a good thing. TV manufacturers have gone all in on 3D. Consumers not, not so with much. Them. Sony showed a 3D TV that you don't have to wear glasses at all but you have to sit in exactly one spot you can't move your head at all and I thought well that's not going anywhere. Toshiba's glasses free 3D display. These are the two companies that had it, Toshiba right. and Sony. And they had a wider viewing angle. Yeah. But it wasn't as 3D either. No. Um, well, the, here's the thing is it looked like you were looking at a hologram. You know how when yeah. the hologram paper is striated? Yeah. That's what it looked like. And it's interlaced, yeah. And and before I went to the show, I really wanted glasses free 3D to be the story of the show. And I called Robert Heron, who's our friend and a, a, the TV expert. Heron and, Media. Or yeah, Heron Heron Fidelity. Fidelity that's right. And he said, you know what, it's gonna it's a resolution issue. They're gonna have to double the resolution in order to get this to be good enough. Well, Toshiba quadrupled it. These are 4K by 2K displays, and it still wasn't good enough. Now, I think that's going to be a darn good looking display in 2D. Well, in my opinion, they should forget 3D, and, and I've said this many times. We, we talked with Scott Wilkinson last week. It, Scott, by the way, will join us to talk about TV's uh, first hour of the show tomorrow, and we'll talk all about this. But uh, he, I say 4K is where they should be going. Forget 3D. Mm -hmm. If you look at a 4K display, that's, that's quad resolution over HD. You see the depth because it's so realistic. Your mind makes the depth for you, and it's much better. Yeah. No now, glasses. All of that shading of color really yeah. creates That's the, the perception future. of 3 That's really the future. And that kind of dovetails into my discussion with Paul Olini from uh, Intel. They are all about the atom processor in smart TVs. They have made a big decision to go in that direction. So they're going to put their Intel chip inside a TV and make it a computer TV, right. kind of. And internet connected TVs is probably the, the story of, of congealing, of sort of yeah. the groundswell 
the moving the show forward this year, I felt that to be, I okay, agree. this is for real. Smart TV would, would probably would be the byword of, of the convention, I think, is, is TVs that are connected to the internet. You can watch Netflix. You can watch your your own pictures from Flickr. You can you can really do it in like a computer, but, but, but only the stuff that you would watch on TV. Up until now, it's been a kludge. Either you have a really long cable from your computer <laughs> right. to your TV right. monitor, or right. you have a set-top box. Right. And the problem for manufacturers, I think Steve Jobs said it best at the D8 conference, he said there's no go-to-market strategy for set-top boxes. Because we as consumers right. are believe that they're free, even though really we're, we're paying. We pay, the, we pay the cable company for them. It's just amortized over so much time that we don't feel it. Yeah. So built into the TV as a feature makes sense to me. One thing that everybody thought Microsoft would announce is a $200 set-top box running Media Center. Steve Ballmer didn't even mention it at all, so maybe that was just a, a bad rumor. Uh, yeah, that's one of those things that I, they didn't talk about it. Um, when they showed off all the things in the magic room, you know, Microsoft had yeah. its own magic room upstairs from the booth, and mm. nothing there that was about that. Hmm. Um, you know, Once again, I, they're kind of left in the cold, I'm afraid. Uh, I think they're poised to come back, but they ain't there yet. <laughs> they got to jump off the jump mm -hmm. diving board. Now, we have something here. That this is kind of an interesting story. James uh, Cordaro is here. He's from a company called Locator Plus Corp. Last year, you gave me a bottle of this screen cleaner. It's called Screen Guard. I didn't know where it came from. I've been using it all year in the studio before iPad today because iPads get filthy. We've been cleaning. Now, Becky, you brought a filthy iPad, and James is going to clean it. I actually love this stuff. I don't know if I should trust you guys. This is a bottle with a huge orange lid. It looks like you're going to day glow my iPad. Not only that, inside the lid, there's a, a cloth. Look okay. at that. Okay, all right. Your, towel, your towel's right inside the lid. Yep. And uh, this stuff is, it can be used on it, o almost anything that's plastic, polycarbonate. Uh, you do have to be careful acrylic. with screen cleaners because you can have yes. be too harsh and, and strip off some of the coating on yes. these screens. And, and the big thing, over time, I mean, our displays, we do cell phones. When we go somewhere, we'll do a cell phone, we'll do eyeglasses. And the great thing about eyeglasses is they get a lot of face oils on them. After about 20 applications, you can actually rinse the glasses off with water and a soft cloth, and all the face oils come right off. So you're putting some protective stuff on So here. there's a, a, a minute amount of... Uh, Becky's really nervous. You're about to spray her iPad. The funny oh thing is it's Lord. foaming up. Look at that. It's, it's foamy. Like a, there's an oven cleaner on my <laughs> iPad. <laughs> but you're, gonna, you're actually going to like this. Sarah Lane and I have been using this on our iPad Today show wow. for a while. Just, and again, I Ooh. didn't even remember getting this from you, James. I just had it. It just appeared at some point, and I want to thank you for it. This is a, Are you selling it in stores? Where can I get this? Actually, uh, we sell it on Amazon online. Okay. It's about the only place. We uh, tried a local market in Southern California at uh, a couple of the Walmarts and some distributors down there. But uh, basically, Woo! it's Amazon uh, is the, the only place right now. We are looking for some distributors nationwide. But the Tilt it a little bit to the right because we can't okay. see how quite how clean it is. Wow. I mean, you can't. There's nothing to see because it's like pitch now, black. <laughs> now the nice thing about it is that it's going to take a while to build up on fingerprints again, but as you build it up, a soft, clean cloth will just remove all the uh, screen guard. fingerprints. It's called screen guard. Thank yes. you for bringing me another bottle. Every year you got to come by and bring me another bottle. Well, it's lasted a year. We let. We it le looks amazing. <laughs> Leo Laporte, the tech guy, more from CES. Right after this. Perfect timing. Perfect. We didn't get to uh, see Margaret Baga. Who was he? This is for you. Thank you. Oh, Give thank Becky you. From the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, Nevada, Leo Laporte here, the tech guy with 200,000 close personal friends. We're all gathered to see the latest gadgets, gizmos, televisions, tablets, and more. You're joining me with uh, right now, uh, she's been here for a little while, my good friend, my old friend, Becky Worley. 
Really? Who said she was dialing down the helmet here? I saw that on <laughs> Facebook. I used hairspray as a crutch on a difficult <laughs> CES day. I pulled it back today. You might have seen Becky this morning on ABC. She reports for Good Morning America, and I guess you've been reporting on ABC uh, for the last three days. Yeah, it's been on and off, and we've had a great show. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. So you did the CEO stuff. We talked a little bit about you talking to the CEO of Intel, uh, of Sony, uh, Microsoft, you also got to talk to the CEO of Verizon. There was an unusual amount of attention on Verizon this week. Yeah, there was a keynote from Ivan Seidenberg from Verizon, and we all thought, hey, is this going to be the iPhone announcement? I actually got up at 7 a.m. to go to that darn keynote. No. Still couldn't get in. Oh. It was jammed. Yeah, the, everybody thought it was going to happen. and um, I. They nothing. announced 245 cities with LTE, their new fourth generation uh, cell phone uh, data network they announced relationships with Skype they did a lot of announcements I kept waiting for Steve to come out with one more thing one more thing nothing, nothing. So and then well, so yesterday wait wait wait, wait. Okay. I gotta tell you this okay. first so that night I had this dinner where I was presenting an award and Ivan Seidenberg was there and I sat next to his wife at the event and so during the first, you know, during the cocktails and time, I said, you know, hey, you know, what about that iPhone, Verizon? She goes, you got to ask the man. And then after the salads came, I go, no, really, really, come on, iPhone, <laughs> iPhone, come on, come on, tell me, tell me. And then by dessert, she was like, get this woman away from me. I know nothing about the iPhone lady. <laughs> well, uh, uh, invitations went out to all the Apple, it was interesting, the Apple tech press from Verizon. Ding, ding, and, ding. and that's kind of, should be a little warning that they're going to have an event in New York City on Tuesday, on the 11th. Mm -hmm. uh, Andy Anatko, who we work with, is a at, at Chicago Sun Times, a big Apple cover mm -hmm. guy, he got an invitation. Mm -hmm. uh, the people who don't normally get invitations from Apple, Gizmodo, did not. Mm -hmm. Leo <laughs> Laporte, did not. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, now I would get an invitation from Verizon, I'm sure. So yeah. I think this is an iPhone announcement. I think it's going to be an iPhone 4, not an iPhone 5. If we're an iPhone 5, it would be an Apple announcement. That's the big distinction is people said, why would Apple, Steve Jobs, let Verizon do this on their own turf with right. their own branding? And I think there are two reasons. One, if Apple does it, it has to be the iPhone 5. It has to be new hardware. It's a big my deal. Gut instinct. Yeah. Yeah. Two, if Steve Jobs makes the announcement in in Cupertino and says, you know, this is where it's, it's we're, we've got this huge announcement, it's a big deal. That's fundamentally a mea culpa that AT&T wasn't good enough. That if it's that big a deal, exactly. a carrier announcement was that big a deal, then it says, exactly. yeah, you guys are right, AT&T wasn't good enough. Yeah, and that's not going to happen because AT&T will continue to sell the mm -hmm. iPhone. In fact, I think Apple would probably like to put it on every carrier, but at least a big step, everybody's wanted a Verizon iPhone, and I think, we don't know when it'll be available. I'm, I would say absolutely certain it will be announced Tuesday, and I bet you it'll be available within a month of the Rumor announcement. Rumor is February 3rd. Oh, ah, yeah, you know why? Because they're giving, they're telling all the Apple Store employees you can't go on vacation. Nope. <laughs> no vacay for you. So, ironically, uh, Apple's not at CES. It, it hasn't uh, been at CES in years, and yet, almost every year, it's the big story of CES, and once again, Apple steals all the coverage. I think it was actually sort of a classy move that, unlike in 2007 when the iPhone was announced at Macworld during CES, all eyes went from Vegas to San yeah. Francisco. It was and pretty that was spectacular. On day one yeah. of the show, I think. Yeah. And I think it was actually a classier move for Verizon to hold off, for Apple to hold off until late Friday to put out the invitations. Yeah. I mean, they also opened the Apple App Store on uh, on Wednesday. I mean, they, uh, yeah. But Apple, Apple, there were a few little digs. And also, can we just pony up, Steve, and come to CES? Yeah, I mean, really, come on, what really. is the beef? So, uh, I, by the way, and I'll talk a little bit about this later, I did also talk to a CEO. I got one, you got four, but you're ABC. I'm just a little old Leo. I did get a chance to talk to Alan Mulally, the CEO of Ford. And actually, we mentioned earlier, it's a big deal that Ford announced a new car here, Huge. not at the Ford Auto Show, the big auto show in Detroit. It's a first. Yeah. And they announced their for, uh, Ford Focus, the electric vehicle. They'll have a hybrid, plug-in hybrid, and all electric uh, by next year. Not this year, but next year. Um, and and it is a consumer electronics device in many ways. Yeah, you know? my, my belief is in the 50s with the muscle cars, people opened up the hood and they looked at the engine. Yeah. Then in the, in the 80s when we became commuters, people looked at the at the uh, drink tank. holders. Oh, and the yeah, cup holders. They looked at the <laughs> cup holders. In the 90s, it was about fuel efficiency right. and they looked yeah. at the gas tank. And yeah. now it's about connectivity. I think you're right. And uh, Ford uh, has done a great job there. And it's kind of uh, it's the second year in a row that uh, he's keen at it at CES. And I think it really is kind of appropriate. Mm -hmm. And also, it's a real tip of the hat to uh, consumer electronics. So 
as a as a gadget hound, I appreciate that. You saw some interesting gadgets. Let's let's find out what you saw. Well, I'll let you listen to one first. All right, listen okay? carefully. This is radio, after all. Yeah. If you could turn up that mic. What? What? That's not feedback. That's a guitar. Um, this is the. Let's see if you can turn this up a little bit more. There it is. What you're listening to is the Katara elect digi not electric, digital guitar. Form factor just like a guitar, except instead of having strings, it has a touch screen where you would normally be finger picking. K I T A R A. K I T. -A -R -A. So it's almost like a tablet guitar. <laughs> it is a tablet guitar, and uh, it's kind of a little bit like uh, if if you were Enya, this would be the greatest thing that ever happened to you. Yeah, I can't see the Rolling Stones. I don't see Keith Richards playing this anytime soon. It's basically done for the guitar, what the synthesizer did right. for the piano. I'm not sure that's really a good thing, and but it is cool, and it's something I didn't know needed innovating. And to some extent, after I listened to it for a while, I felt like getting a massage. It was sort of like that holistic music <laughs> Thank they you, play. Enya. One of the other things that uh, CES is all about uh, is is auto sound, sound cars. It isn't just you know computer style gadgets and. Uh, you saw a number of things uh, about safe driving, and we have a safe driving uh, product here yeah, as let's well have today. You guys tell us a little bit Jim, about Jim Rennie is here from Safe Key Corporation. Hi, Jim. Leo, Becky, thanks for having us. Good to see you. What is it? Give me, hand me that, and I, I can show the, the sure. folks at home. Because it's radio, I'll hold it up next to the microphone for the folks Great. at home. <laughs> this is called a simple deterrent to impaired driving. This is for drunk drivers. or Yeah, it, it has a little bit more uh, bandwidth than that. In other words, the device is called the Safe Key System. Mm -hmm. We've addressed two of the biggest problems in America. One is impaired driving. Mm -hmm. Every 35 minutes, someone's killed by an it's alcohol tragedy. related. Yep. And the other piece of this, which we can get to, is anti-theft. Uh -huh. Every 32 seconds, a car is stolen in America. So this protects so, against both. Yeah, and if I can explain it, the the if you install the safe key system, and it comes with all the cables and everything. That yeah, that's the immobilizer you're yeah. pointing to. Okay. That goes in the engine, just underneath the dashboard. Could, could, could a consumer install this, or do you have to bring it to a uh, shop? We recommend professional installation. Okay. Uh, however, a consumer, if they're comfortable enough, we have a PDF on our website. It's okay. pretty simple. It bypasses the starter engine. A savvy consumer could install this. Right. <laughs> yeah, somebody who's tuning there. I could there, not install Yeah, yeah I'm not going to install it. Yeah. <laughs> right. But in other words. Uh, so what's in the cabin? That's, that's in the engine. Yeah, the piece on the left with the wiring just simply goes underneath the dashboard. Okay. And then this little check module is going to ask you. It, to it, it would fit. It's a key fob. It would fit on the keychain. Right. Yep. Yeah. You carry that with your, your keychain or leave yep. it and, in the and car. Now I see OK and OK. Check follow. Right. I see a bunch of buttons. Wh right. What do I do? And is so it a breathalyzer? It, it's a little better than that. We'll demonstrate it, but it, it, it it's going to ask the driver if you install this. Your car doesn't start traditionally anymore. Right. You need to let the engine know you're fit cognitively. What do I have to do? Math? You have to do five LED lights at 2.4 seconds, million and a half different sequences. So it's like Simon. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a, a good quick game analogy. of Simon. How long does it take to play the game? 2.4 4 seconds. So, so pretty quickly in there. Yeah, all you have to do is click OK, and then you have to follow along. I see an idea. I, I messed that you up. You already can't. So you're not driving. I'm, I'm sorry. Already get back. A taxi. And yeah. So I have three tries. Okay, we're going to get the camera on you. For the people watching at home, we do have a live video oh stream boy, at live.twit.tv. So the pressure is on. The pressure is on. So okay. Let me, let me try this again. You click OK. Okay. And then you follow along. There's a blue, there's a green, there's a blue, there's a there. red. So it clicks OK. It was five clicks. Yep, five clicks in 2.4 seconds. Now, at that point, you could start the car. If you had failed, the car wouldn't start. After three times, it, it won't move for an hour. You now, have because hour that's on your keychain, no theft, no thief can do that either. Well, we, uh, if we, we got to run. We got to run. I'm sorry, we're running out of time. Safe key. We'll find out where to get that in just a bit. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. I just heard the sound in my head. Is there a website we can find out more about? Sure, safekeycorporation.com. This portion of the Tech Guy Show is brought to you by Carbonite.com. It's backup done right. You've got to back it up to get it back. So on Windows or Mac, go to Carbonite.com. Use the offer code LEO for a free trial. Leo Laporte, the Tech Guy at the Consumer Electronics Show. Do I sound a little hoarse? I'm a little hoarse. It is the land of no moisture and yeah. no cell it's service, dry here. as Rafe Needleman no, says. No moisture or cell service. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but I'm not horse as I normally would be. I've done, uh, you know, we, we did with Tech TV, Beck and I, way back when, uh, did Comdex for several years, CES for several years. By the end of the time, I would not be able to talk. No. No. I talked to Gina Smith, who's uh, re the new editor-in-chief of Byte Magazine. She said, 
I would like to be on the show, but I can't talk. Oh, <laughs> so, but I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. We are. This is a huge show, and it is. A, it's just overwhelming. Uh, how, do you know Becky Worley is here? She's uh, from ABC News. She is their uh, tech correspondent. Do you know how big this is? How many people? How many? I do. This is estimated to be the biggest ever from 2007 where there were 143,000 people here. It's estimated this year it's 160,000. I believe it. It, it feels it, bigger than ever. It was down to 113 back in 2008, 2009. I think it was 2008, 2009. All trade shows were going away at that time. Yeah, big dump up. Many of the them economy. have continued to go away, but this one is thriving. There's no question about that. Yep. How many vendors? How many football fields worth of stuff? I think there are um, 12,000 vendors is what I heard, wow. but that's a, I'm, I'm just going from a news report. 5,000 accredited press people, mm -hmm. but most of the people here are dealers who come to see new products so that they can stock them in their stores in the fall. Uh, there's been conjecture that this year, less breakthrough out there, down the line products, much more practical. We're going to see it in three to 12 months gear. You agree? Uh, well, it was like that last year, too. In fact, a lot of the, remember the e-book reader onslaught that we had last year? They, yep. Everybody wanted to do a Kindle killer, and mm -hmm. very few of them ever came out. Yep. We did finally see the 3D TVs that were announced mm -hmm. last year. And because the iPad hadn't come out, everybody was making kind of speculative tablet devices because nobody knew what the iPad would be. Many of those haven't come out. So I would say last year there were quite a few products that didn't make it. We'll see vaporware. how. Yeah, we'll see what happens this year. But uh, it is often a vaporware show. Now, we were talking about safety. And what was that? It was safetykeycorporation.com was yeah, the last safe, device. Safe key. Safekeycorporation.com. You also went to the folks at Taser. Now, wait a minute. Taser. Right. That's stun the thing, gun. That's the thing the police carry to stun people. Don't tase me, bro. In fact, they were tasing people upstairs. <laughs> they were taking volunteers. Who would? You'd have to be crazy to do this. They were taking volunteers. Would you like to be tased? Well, come on into our booth. And I sure. saw one of them. It was, it was all I could take. They, he said to the guy, now, you told me you didn't want to know when you were going to be tased, right? <laughs> Boom. And they got the guy. <laughs> and he falls to the ground. It can't be pleasant. But that's not the only thing they're selling. Well, there was a Wired article about four or five months ago talking about where Taser's been and where they're going. And they have invested insane amounts of R&D in a product that they're calling Protector. Protector. It's Protector. It's an aftermarket install for your car to help protect teen drivers and give parents of teen drivers peace of mind. What it does is, first and foremost, when you flip the ignition, the teen cell phone, there's an app on the, on the teen cell phone, it disables the phone so that they can't receive or send texts. Teens, I need this one. I know, I know. Um, but only you can only make emergency calls. That's number one feature. That's good. Number two feature is that it's a tracking device. So your teen, their whereabouts, the car's whereabouts, known at all times. Now, their speed and their acceleration, if there's extreme acceleration, there's a report generated. Those are emailed or texted to mom good or Lord. dad. There's also a geofence, so if your kid is on restriction and can only go to and from school. I do not want to be a teenager these days. That's I mean, tough. I mean, you you give me great parenting advice, Leo, because <laughs> I mean, I I I you know I have young kids, and so I can only imagine they drive. What? I'd Be love this. Becky's Becky's uh, twins turned three just That's a couple right. of days That's ago. Right. Yeah. And you said you gotta let them. You gotta. L l I wouldn't I wouldn't put this electronic leash on them right away, but I think you said the right thing. What if? you really need it yeah. if, you, if you're Lindsay Lohan's dad <laughs> it's not a bad thing to have no and um, it's also low jack so the That's other true. thing is your car gets jacked That's true. and you know where it is don't tell my kids but the iPhone found my iPhone also works quite well for them <laughs> Just you're don't, not tell, doing don't that, dad. tell my kids Abby, that Henry uh, he's not doing he's not tracking I wouldn't, you I wouldn't I wouldn't do that if I were you <laughs> so um, I want to tell everybody Becky's Twitter handle because we've because Becky needs more followers. <laughs> at B W O R L E Y. Thank you, At Leo. sign B W O R L E Y. I'm a, con I'm a real consumer advocate, so not only will I tell you the latest gear, but I also I, t I tweet out the deals every once in a while. Yeah, you're big on deals, I know. And that's something I'm seeing at the show. Price is down. So let me give you an example. Pan okay. Panasonic debuted their, their in the 40 inch range, a 3D plasma last year. Comparable, newer model for this year. Three to five hundred dollars less they expect. That's very good news. So I, I think this is a trend that we won't really see until it hits retail later in the year. But the prices on 3D technology, at least manufacturers get it. Consumers ain't paying more for it. We'll do a whole hour on home theater from uh, CES tomorrow with Scott Wilkinson, our home theater guy. Now I'm going to ask you to stick around, Becky, because in a moment my ear, somebody's going to pour something into my ear. Oh, that sounds pleasant for you. <clears throat> We're going to get some sculpted ears. Oh. 
This is actually a new kind of headphone that fits your ear like a glove. Mm. Ooh, but before, and I'm going to need some, I can't talk for four minutes. You made it sound like someone was putting one of those <laughs> weevils from Star Trek. <laughs> that sounded a little creepy. Ah! I can't talk for four minutes, so I might need you, Becky. Okay, we'll I'll, see. I'll be the tech gal. I will get my ears poured in a moment. But all right, now, <laughs> I did a, little, a little Paul, Paul Harvey I like thing. That. Page two. Next part of the story. <laughs> Thank you. So what's your name? Jocelyn Rowcliffe. Hi, Jocelyn. And you're with Ears. Who makes Ears? E-E-R-S. <laughs> I'm with Sonomax Technologies. Sonomax, okay. And we have created sculpted ears. We do self-fit custom molded headphones. Now, I, you know, everybody in TV has custom molded headphones. You go to an audiologist, they pour uh, some stuff in your ear. You have to sit there. I, I went to another company, which shall remain nameless, to get custom earphones like Bono. You're like a rock star. Like Bono uses. And I and, and it, first time it didn't work. Second time, it, you know, these things were they were so uncomfortable I never wore them again. They were hard plastic. It cost me th How much did these crazy cost? Crazy spendy, those things, those when were, you get it these, custom. Those are crazy. How so... These are coming to market in the spring. Yep. The single driver, which is one speaker, will cost one ninety nine, and a dual affordable. driver premium product is two ninety nine. That's retail. that's re that's half what I paid for the other companies. The uh, other. But do I have to go to an audiologist? No, you don't. The rock star style products that you're talking about are wonderful products, but they're not exactly consumer friendly. No. You have to go to the audiologist. You may have to wait four to six weeks, and some right. of the price I did. points Took are forever. wonderful. Yeah. Um, and it can be a scary process. So this is do-it-yourself. This is a do-it-yourself system. All right, she's gonna come over. She's gonna. We're gonna take a break because I can't talk while this happens. Can you imagine? I will get my ears sculpted, and we'll come back in a moment. We'll see how it's worked. Thank you. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Come on over here and pour that in my ear. Wow. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Becky, Becky was gonna do this, and something went wrong. I don't know, I don't know why she didn't get to do this. Good Lord. I do it all myself. Okay, we're still live, by the way, so uh, not yeah. on the radio, but, uh, you want but me to we'll describe, describe what's this. Happening, or yeah, you would you describe it? So she's putting some uh, gunk. I've heard about that. Water-based I've heard of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're putting it. This is ridiculous. Becky, can you just pass me the little blue device? Ooh. Oh, oh no. Wow, that's cool. I don't know Nothing about this. Nothing goes in your ear. Leo, if you Nothing look at this. Nothing goes in my ear. There's a balloon around it's the earpiece. It's piece. like a, like a bubble gum. Nothing touches your okay. ear other than the balloon. Okay. Okay? So that's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. That's going to fill up inside your ear. You've wow. tested these, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> On humans? You're my guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs> Subject number one. All right. So, we activate the switch, which you would do at home. Yeah. If you take this headband, which is the fitting system. It comes system, with all this stuff. comes with all of this. This is the disposable sonal fit not gonna fitting keep that, system. Right. No. This is cool. Hi, Shotgun. Hold on a sec. I'm getting my ears fit. So. <laughs> nice to see you. The Listen chat room guy. says. Shotgun Tom Leo? Kelly. Oh, Go nice. ahead and put this on. Oh, yeah. Put Jocelyn it over your head it. vertical. Go ahead. Put Loop this the on behind my head. Behind your ears. All right. And just have it comfortably within your ears. Okay. 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 Just like okay. I'll That's help you because at home you'd need a mirror. That's yeah, all yeah, you yeah. need. Okay. I'm just adjusting the, the band. So for That's those of you listening, Leo, thumb thing. Leo has a like headband so over his those? head. So exactly. What I'm going to do is. Are you a trained audiologist, Jocelyn? No, I'm not. And you don't have to be. You can take this home and do it at home. <laughs> Jocelyn's a marketing professional. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to activate the system. What's this going to feel like? You've done this yourself? Hundreds of times. Oh, all right. Then so it sounds like opening up a pop bottle or a pop can. Okay. Um, you're going to feel it expanding in the, your ear. Yeah. And honestly, the noise around us is going to disappear for you. Okay. Okay, you just need to I'm, sit still. It's you don't get silent. need any of that bite guards. Okay. You just need a neutral, relaxed okay. jaw for four minutes. We're going to be back in two minutes, so I won't but be able to say go. anything. You're going to have I'll, to do it all. I'll get you back in here. There's quiet for the first time ever <laughs> on The Tech Guy. Leo is sitting. He's not moving his mouth. The chat room says this is a, this is a trap. They say this is, this is a trap, and they also say this is a Canadian plot to take over the world. <laughs> By first starting with Leo Laporte, and there was a man who just walked over here who was a Mountie. He was wearing a Mountie hat. It was Shotgun, shotgun Tom Kelly, who came over here to harass Leo in the midst of this. Hey, uh, 
Will you guys just cue me when we go on? It's the music, right? I just wait. But just cue me when. Okay. <laughs> Oh my stars. What is it? I wish I could ask you what it feels like, but is it squishy? It feels basically what you feel is it feels like it's expanding in your ear. Your ear is filling up. And honestly, there's noise isolation principles behind it. Sonomax is a hearing company. We've been around for 10 years. I want to ask you. Okay. I just want Hmm? I just want to ask her that on when we get to when we get on, actually on the air, because that's really interesting. So I want to hear that when we get on the air. But give me a really big visible cue, because I'm cool. Can clueless. you pass me the wires? Uh, I'll let you know when those ones. Oh, sure. Oh yeah. Great. Thank you. Awesome. Oop. All right. Um, you are listening to the off air feed of Leo Laporte being quiet. His ears are filled with some sort of space age polymer and he's been told not to move his mouth. It's excruciating. Okay, putting you up in five seconds. <laughs> and you're live. Welcome back to The Tech Guy with Leo Laporte. Obviously, I am not the tech guy. Becky Worley here, filling in for Leo Laporte, who is sitting next to me with some sort of space-age polymer in his ears. He cannot talk for fear that it will compromise the self-fitted earphones from a company that has a product called Sculpted Ears. And what is exactly, and we have to wait another minute and 30 seconds until Leo can remove this weevil from his ear. I can't take it anymore. You can do it, Leo. Stay with the program. The, I this, don't want to ride that. And we should let people know that if you got uh, this done professionally, it would be four, five hundred dollars. But how much does this, how much does the product cost? The single driver retails for one ninety nine and the dual driver will be two ninety nine. Now and, what's and in it? And it will keep ear? anyone you know silent for four minutes. Tom Merritt joining <laughs> us. We're all amazed at the quiet Leo. <laughs> I've never seen this. Uh, what exactly is in his ears right now? So it's all medical grade silicone. What's happening is there's a plug in his ear. It's expanding right now. It's expanding with silicone that is taking the exact shape of his ear. What happens is it expands to his ear. He's going to walk away with his own custom molded in-ear products. And what is the benefit of that, aside from the fact that you can brag to your friends that you're like a rock star? Is it comfort? Is it the stay put? Is it the sound quality? It's all of it. It is performance, so the sound quality. It is comfort. They'll never hurt. They'll never fall out. And it is safety. There is passive noise isolation. So what's happening is he's going to put them in, and he's going to get about 15 to 18 decibels of noise protection with this product. Mm. So he's not going to have to listen to the same levels of volume of music that he's used to because he's actually blocking out the outside noise. Now you're done, Leo. Oh, thank God. Oh. So wow. That was the hardest off. thing I've ever done. You're going to oh. take off the fitting system yourself. It's actually, uh, uh, by the way, it was very easy. The sound that you would hear is it was like pop, pop, pop. And it's, it wasn't a lot of pressure, but it slowly fills up like a yeah. balloon's filling up. So go ahead. So I just pull this out. Just lightly pull. Take it by the headband right here. Take it out and pass it over to me, and we'll finish it off, and you'll take it for a test run. You look nervous, like your brains uh, might come out with it. Uh, yeah. You, you are Somebody concerned. Somebody said this is uh, my competitor's plan to take over the radio <laughs> so show. So these are your product. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's ears. So that fits my ear? That's my ear canal that you have there. Ears are more distinctive than fingerprints. Yeah. Huh. Really? I know, because I tried to wear Becky's uh, earphone once, and it was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> no, you cannot share those no. earpieces. They only go in one way. No, and, I, and that time you this put on my pants, too. Oh, well, oh, those fit pretty well. <laughs> your fingerprints. Well, mm, um, one leg. But, <laughs> so, uh, I, as we said, I've done this before at an audiologist several times. You, got, you guys have all done it. Mm -hmm. Anybody who does TV gets this, these things made. It's very expensive. And uh, now, of course, this is nothing if you don't have good headphones in here. So you, you, these are pretty good headphones, I would hope. They are. The single gonna, driver is a dynamic speaker. The dual driver is balanced dual armature speakers. All right. So I, uh, I, uh, I actually kind of am a little bit of a headphone fanatic of here. Of course you are. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, plug in my, uh, my headphones into my. Uh, okay. My, I have a little Moby here. We're gonna listen to. All right. 
So you know how to insert these, but the general population wouldn't know how to put them in okay. because they're custom fit to you. So you wrap them around your ear, right. and because they're made exactly for you, you just wiggle and twist and push them in. Sometimes you, you, even, you can open the ear canal a little exactly. bit like that to get them in there. You yeah. can't push them in too deep because they're made exactly to your ear. So don't be shy to give them a little push because you're going you to create <laughs> Let me help you with that. seal. You're right. going to block that noise aid around you, so you're going to be in your own little bubble of music. If you've never worn in ear monitors, it really is the best way to have headphones. Huh. I, I, I only use in-ear monitors now. Huh. Uh, oh, much more comfortable than those other guys. I had to stop using them. They were hard plastic. I don't oh, know why they didn't make them. They're very comfortable. How's the sound? If you're talking to me, it's I It's not can. right yet. <laughs> Here we go. I'm going to plug this into now the, uh, gone from Leo my uh, cell to phone Leo and play a little movie. Yeah, that's good. There's a lot of bass. I gotta turn it down. That sounds fantastic. Always turn it down when you put There's them in. There's fantastic bass. I can't hear you, but I'm going <laughs> over right now. No, this sounds Tom, really good. Tom, how do you like working for Leo? Is he kind of wow, a tough boss? Wow, these are great. In fact, I well, really I, just I want still to rock don't want to answer the show. <laughs> he can't hear us. <laughs> so, uh, are, do I have the two driver model or the one? You have driver? the single driver model. Single. So you have an even higher level. Yes, we do. Well, I went off through all that. And now I want the better ones. That's really great. These fit very well. They're extremely comfortable. Um, and uh, this is from Sono Max, so, and it comes with the full everything you see here, right? The uh, automatic measurer, and this you is can only the use Sono that fit, once. Sono Fit fitting system. You can't really use that again. No. Nope. nope. Uh, and then it has a nice case. And what, what is this little uh, That is the jar? fitting lubricant. Lubricant. That we use to fit your ear. I don't need that anymore, though. You don't need it anymore. Some people like to have it to. It's water based. <laughs> hey. Hey, can I ask you, you a question? Know. What's the passive noise canceling like? How much noise does it's it block good. out? It's very good. Well, here we are in a very noisy environment. Yeah. I was, uh, I'll be honest with you, I just wanted to listen to Moby. It was, I was like, it was great. Oh, interesting. Um, I would give these to you, but they won't fit you. They're and just in fact, for you, boss. apparently, there's no point in giving them back to Sonomax no, because <laughs> there's nothing they can do with them either. Score. You know what? These are, Jocelyn, thank you so much. You're that welcome. is so cool. Uh, the last time I did this, I had to take a trip to an audiologist. It took a d you know an hour to do that. I didn't get my headphones for uh, a month. I mean, this is a really, I think this is a very interesting product. Uh, are they available for sale yet? No, they'll be available in the spring at select retailers. And uh, we should look for them uh, then. S-O-N-O-M-A-X. S-O-N-O-M-A-X dot com, and you can go to Sculpted Ears as well. I like this. I might do this to Regis next week. It'd be fun Ooh. to keep him quiet for four minutes. That'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> never happen. Good never, call. never happen. Thank you so much, Jocelyn. Thank you. So nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. And thank you, Becky, for filling in. You did a, a wonderful job. I aspire to tech guyness. Did she do a billboard, or do I need to do a... Uh, <laughs> Louise? Did no. she do a billboard, or do I need to do a billboard? I don't need to do a billboard. <laughs> okay. Hey, I want to thank, by the way, Luis Oliveira, who is normally my board operator in Sherman Oaks. Uh, running the running the show he's here he came out to Vegas and uh, he's been very kind and ha helped us get this all set up in fact he really stepped in because we had some technical difficulties before the show and really did a great job getting it all working thank if you if you Liz. have a second I noticed a phenomenon here what's that I'm you know we see a ton of people we've known over the years here because so many tech sure. journalists you are should here. see the stack of business cards I have people that we acquaintances etc there's so many people whose names I can now remember because of Facebook like, you know when someone comes out of the crowd and you just can't put a name with a face? That happened to me so much less this CES because of Facebook. That is interesting. Another thing's happened to me lately is Twitter. I see people I've never met, and I go, oh, hey, it's Mickey Chan. I have no idea who Mickey Chan is, but I know her from Twitter. I follow her. Right. It's Although with Twitter, you don't know their real names. So right. Just like, say hey, it's Scooter handle. X. Yes, How's exactly. It hey, Scooter X. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like our chat room. That was really fun doing that. It wasn't as weird as it felt, as it seemed like it might have felt. And it, and I, you know what? Those are these are great headphones. I'm, I'm very happy. Cool. I'm really happy with that. A little pricey. I mean, people aren't used. To, you know, people are used to spending twelve dollars for Skull Candy, and uh, these are a little expensive. Hey, we've got some award winners here. Look at that. It's a showcase award from uh, the CEA, the Consumer Electronics Association. Becky, if you want to take off, you can. I don't. If you want to stick around, for twit, but I would want? love it if you would stay here. It's you, you're my new co-host. I've just you're hired. <laughs> Becky Worley, at B-W-O-R-L-E-Y on Twitter. She's the uh, technology reporter for ABC, a very good friend. I've known Becky since 1998 when we launched a TV show, a little TV show together. She was a, a producer. I was the host of a thing called The Screensavers, and that's 
That's when we first met, I think. I was getting my coffee this morning, and a guy said, hey, I recognize you from somewhere. And we figured it out. He said, I used to watch that tech TV, and it was the first time I realized there were other people who had this interest. That was the real benefit of tech TV, is it made nerds feel uh, like, oh, I'm not the only weirdo in the world. Yeah. Uh, boy, they just turned up the earthquake. Can you hear it? <laughs> Can you hear it at home? I don't know. It, we, they, they very cleverly uh, placed our booth right in front of a... <laughs> subwoofer company called Earthquake. <laughs> and every about half hour or so, they turn on the demo. <laughs> they, they had someone out there yesterday. He was either doing slam poetry or there was a hog auction behind <laughs> us. We couldn't quite figure it out. <laughs> so we've got a winner, it looks like. I see a big award, the Showcase Award for Design and Engineering from the Consumer Electronics Association. David Gill is here from Sleek Audio. Hi, David. How's it going? So you won an award. We did. Uh, very I think proud. you're kind of proud of it, aren't you? Incredibly proud. I just walk around the show with it in my hand. We'll find out what that award was for when we return in just a little bit. Leo Laporte, that's, that's what we call a tease in the business, the tech guy. That, that was a good tease. It was. What a tease. So this, what did you win? Best we audio? Best for headphones. Best headphones, more headphones, great. Yeah, it's, it's this is these are good. I'm, I'm in. I don't know if they're as good as my Etymotics, right, but they fit so in. nicely. They're okay, so the comfortable. And I, the only thing, and I didn't want to say this on the air, the only thing about in-ear monitors is if you have a lot of earwax, as I do, <laughs> it can be a little embarrassing when you pull them out. <laughs> it's a mini. I have to repeat this tweet because it is so funny. Uh, Roger Chang has just tweeted, this is the first time I've sat down all week that didn't require me to flush afterwards, pound CES. <laughs> That's kind of what this show is about. Yeah, there it is. It says it all in a nutshell. <laughs> Leo Laporte, the tech guy. We are here at the Consumer Electronics Show in beautiful downtown Las Vegas, Nevada at the uh, LVCC, which is huge. I mean, we're in the South Hall. That's one floor we're at South Hall one and two upstairs South Hall three and four and that's only about a quarter of the whole show do you remember when we came for Condex and we had a big booth gear for ZDTV Tech TV I can't remember who we were at the time but my favorite part of that was we came away from the show with a circular piece of the wall <laughs> of the Las Vegas Convention Center because at that point in time conventions were not highly televised and right. we wanted to get all of our cabling straight in from the sat truck they had to drill a hole in the wow. LVCC well now if you look out in the alley behind this building there's sat trucks up and down the whole thing. Becky Worley is here. She is ABC's technology correspondent. You've seen her on Good Morning America. You've seen her a lot on ABC this week, World News Tonight, and all the other shows covering CES. Thank you for being here. It is my joy. We did a big tease. We have an award on the on this table here, uh, the uh, Design and Engineering Showcase Award from the Consumer Electronics uh, Association. It's one of their innovation awards. And it's for, what is it, what is it for, David Gill? It's for the uh, Sleek Audio SA7. So it's the Best of Innovations Award for the headphone category. Great. Uh, Another headphone. Yes. What's, what's, what's uh, different about these? Uh, quite a few things, actually. Uh, we're a fairly young company. Mm -hmm. um, our background, I heard you, you mentioned Etymotics. Yep. Uh, I'm not, a big Etymotics fan. Not dissimilar. Our background is actually hearing aid sciences as well. Interesting. Um, but we've taken a very different approach in terms of how to offer mobile audio in an in-ear format. Um, Jason and Mark Crike, which actually father and son team, mm -hmm. they worked in the hearing aid field for quite some time, and they basically said, if you look at earphones, it sounds different to each person because each ear, as we know, is completely sure. unique. Yep. Um, so what they did is they actually invented the first ever acoustically tunable earphones. <laughs> I'll be darned. Now we should explain there are different kinds of earphones. You've probably seen the big earphones that go over the ear. There's also earbuds. Everybody's seen those now, mm -hmm. thanks to uh, uh, iPods. And there's also something called in-ear monitors or IEMs. They're kind of like earbuds, but they go deeper into the ear canal. It's what we've just uh, made, in fact, was an yes. in-ear monitor. And that's what these are as well. They go into the ear. Yes, these go into the ear. And it's actually, it was funny, when you were mentioning the uh, the earthquake bass boom. Subwoofers, yeah. And you were talking to two companies here that uh, were very much about hearing preservation and education. Uh, in-ear monitors or in-ear earphones, actually, because they seal off the ear canal from external noise, as you know, you can play it at a fraction the volume. That's right. And still get the clarity and detail. So it actually helps to preserve your hearing. And because it's so, it's so close to your eardrum, mm -hmm. bass is actually very good on these things. You know, it's uh, not going to shake your body, but they fe it sounds exactly as it should. Mm -hmm. I think. As a parent, I would actually invest in this. When my kids watch... Earbuds are terrible. When my kids watch uh, DVDs on the airplane, I've actually invested in noise-canceling headphones yeah. for them because I don't want them to have the 
volume up. all the way up. I think there's going to be a real problem, frankly, with kids who've grown up with these earbuds. It, we refer to it already as the iPod generation, yeah. and we try to educate people as much as possible. We say, look, um, while obviously we'll say our in-ear earphones are the best, mm -hmm. if you don't go with ours, go with other in-ears. Yeah. If you can hear the music playing from your child's That's buds bad. from a few feet... It's only, you're looking at 15, 20 minutes before you could be causing permanent hearing damage. There's a little yeah. resistance, though, and especially with kids, because these do go in your ear. Mm -hmm. It kind of feels a little strange at first. I'm used to them. In fact, I'm wearing the ones that we just made from Sonomax right now, mm. and I love them. They're very comfortable, but it does take a while to get used to it. There's a little gag factor going on here for the, to the young ones, I think. Yeah, that's the education, and that's, that's what we're trying to do. Um, but really what it comes down to with, with our earphones is... How do you tune them? How does it tune for the ear? Tuning ports. We call it the VQ tuning system. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually invented it. It's a patented system. And all you really if you move the award a little no, to the side, no. we can actually see this on the camera. Is that all right? I know it's a radio show, folks, but we're also sh shooting video of uh, this, uh, which we'll put out on the uh, website. See it right there. Uh, there we go. Okay, beautiful. Yeah. Um, this is a system we patented. So the earphone's going to come with a few different ports for both treble and bass. What you're looking at is the SA6R. We're going to be releasing this in a few months. It's actually a U.S.-made earphone. I also want to point that out. We're bringing most of our manufacturing That's great. back to the U.S. Thank you. Uh, something we're very proud of. <laughs> it's been a challenge, Yeah. Uh, which is odd because you think bringing it home to be easy. It's not. Um, but basically what you can see is you unscrew the tuning port. So will the consumer do this at home? Yes. Okay. It's it's about kind of having fun with the ear. It come <laughs> in a neutral setting. Okay. Uh, you listen to it. Yeah. And for most people, they say it's perfect. It's flat. It's what I want. Um, but your ear is an acoustic chamber. So when you put the earphone into the ear canal, how far away it is from the eardrum, the dimensions of your ear canal, it's its own room. Right. So when you get loudspeakers, you tune them to that room. If right. you want it to perform the best, you can do the same with our earphones. How do you do it? So you change out the port. So for example, on the front, we have the treble tuning port, and you change it out, and once you find the, uh, the right setting for your ear. What do you mean change it out? Yeah, well, he has different ear ports, ear. so he's gonna clip in the different one. But David, how is this different oh. from just changing the equalization in my, in my device, uh, turning up the bass, Sure, the, the EQ on your device, as you know, is electronic. It's gonna range from device to, a to device. Uh, sometimes you're gonna have subtle harmonic distortions. I mean, this is really for. So this is a more accurate way to do it. Significantly more so, because okay. it's acoustic. Yeah. Um, and then in the back, you have the bass ports, so you can actually remove the turn, bass Turn port. up or down the bass in effect. And you can, from the minus to the plus, you have almost a 12 dB swing Oh, that's bass. a, uh, oh, for people who don't know, that's huge. That's a lot. So it, and again, it, it's, it's about you. It, right. We find it funny if someone listens to an earphone and they say, well, it's too harsh for me, and the manufacturer says, it's not harsh. Well, it's your ears. It's your ears, you get to say. <laughs> exactly. Um, when, when, when are these available now? Uh, these are going to be coming out in uh, the next few months. What's what? available now is the SA-1. It's our entry model that okay. actually is also tunable. SA-1, and then the new ones will be out in a few months. And how much? Uh, it ranges. Um, SA-1 is 80, SA-6 is 200, SA-7 will be about 399. I know and people choke when we say these prices for in-ear monitors. <laughs> they are that expensive, but they're really good. And I mean, they're very quality speakers. I mean, uh, they, they, it's going to cost that much for good headphones, and it's going to protect your ears. And I haven't I even gotten to the it. wireless. I don't know if we have time. Okay. Uh, we'll tell you what, take a break. We will take <laughs> a break. We'll come back. We'll talk about wireless in a minute. Sounds good. Uh, David Gill is here from Sleek Audio. Becky Worley from ABC News. It's great to have you both. You are watching or listening, I should say to live coverage of the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, Nevada. And uh, even though you are probably enjoying your uh, afternoon and enjoying life, you I know are a computer user, you probably have that computer right to hand, and I would like you to go to a website right now, if you're not in the car, carbonite.com. This would be a good, uh, a good New Year's resolution to back up your data. You've got all those great holiday photos on there. You've got financial records, emails. There's tons of stuff on your computer you cannot afford to lose. Most of us don't have a backup strategy. You've got to have one. It's got to be automatic so you don't have to remember how to do it or when to do it. And it's got to be off-site. Now, this is one that's a little tough for people sometimes. That means you're not backing it up on a USB drive next to the computer. That's fine to do. But you've also got to back it up somewhere else. So if the worst happens, a fire, a flood, or, or all your stuff gets stolen, you can get it back. That's what Carbonite does. It backs it up to the Internet securely using 128-bit SSL encryption. Once it's there, you can access it from any computer anywhere. You can even get it from an iPhone application or a BlackBerry application. They're both free. I want you to try Carbonite Online Backup today. You can do it completely free. Just use my name, Leo, at Carbonite.com. Unlimited backup for your PC or Mac. 
if you decide to buy just $55 a year, 15 cents a day, and I'm going to save you because I'm going to give you two months free in addition if you use my name, Leo. Go to Carbonite.com, offer code Leo. you got to back it up to get it back, so do it right with Carbonite. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, the consumer electronics show in Las Vegas. We're talking about headphones. You know, anybody in radio uses headphones a lot. I know uh, people now, they, though, with portable devices, are using headphones all the time. Sleek Audio wants to make your uh, experience better with in-ear monitors that are wireless. That's one of the problems with headphones, is these long wires all over the place. Tell me about your wireless device. Sure, well, what we actually developed here is a, a detachable coaxial cable on all of our earphones. So when I say wireless... So they're wired and unwired. Wireless hybrid is basically the term okay. we use for them. Uh, it can be either or. Uh, the other reason is... So the same headphones. Same headphones. So you have it attached to the cable. Uh, we're coming out with a mic cable soon that you can just simply upgrade you know, to. Usually, the wireless I've tried before, they have a big old dongle hanging off of for the Bluetooth receiver. I was going to say, where is that? <laughs> but no, that goes to the device. This, this, this is what goes to the device. Uh, we don't use Bluetooth. We use what's called Clear. So it's your own... Uh, it's a company we work with that's proprietary okay. technology. It's a 2.4 gigahertz, 16-bit, lossless. Better, much better than Bluetooth. Yeah. Yes. Um, and you and so you have a, a little uh, a little lanyard that hangs around your neck. That's you, the receiver. You can tighten that up behind uh -huh. the back. It weighs uh -huh. virtually nothing. Um, uh -huh. We actually have about 400 professional athletes who use this with our customs because they can run with it. You can fly with it. You know how baseball players love to listen to their music. <laughs> that they do. <laughs> that's great. I think that's really cool. And you can have up to four of the receivers sync up to one of the transmitters. Oh, interesting. So you could have all four, the mm -hmm. whole family could be listening to a book yeah. on tape. Or and you were getting audio file quality sound wirelessly. How much additional for the wireless? The wireless is about 100 extra. Very good. You can buy it with or David without. David Gill, Sleek Audio. Thanks for joining us. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. I realized we were done. <laughs> I thought we had another hour. <laughs>